The World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. In South Florida, the sun has set on the championship hopes of many, but is still in clear sight of a select few. The conclusion of the record-setting Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown is happening tonight on the WPT. Well, the crowd all standing. He is circling the drain. They are going bare knuckles in the center of the ring. He would love to knock this loud mouth out. Oh! Hi everyone, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. Tonight, the World Poker Tour wraps up this blockbuster edition of the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown in Hollywood, Florida. As always, I'm joined by WPT's own poker experts, Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. Now guys, with the finish line clearly on the horizon, what is the best strategy at this stage of the game? Well, Lynn, the best strategy right now is to catch some cards. That's what all three of these guys want. Our current chip leader is 28-year-old James Mackey from Kansas City, Missouri. In second place is Eric Offriot from Montreal, Canada. He's an amateur, retired businessman. But right now, in third place, has been the hottest guy on the tour this season, Moko Pahuja, a distant third now. Vince, the question is, can he come back and take this title? I still think he can. Well, he could win it, Mike, no doubt about it. But, Lynn, this is the seminal hard rock this is sacred poker grounds. Greatness has happened. All three players would love to have the bragging rights of beating out the largest field in WPT history. Who will do it? Thanks, guys. We shall see. This should be a thrilling finish with the WPT title and nearly $1.1 million up for grabs. Play is set to resume, so let's check the chip counts and get back to the game. There you see the Skrill chip count. James Mackey out in front with $23 million. The businessman from Canada, Eric Afriot, in second place, Michael Pahuja in third. And he's at 50,000. The blinds are 150 and 300. Let's go to the felt. Action on the former clothing businessman, Eric Afriot from Montreal. He's got a pair of sixes. Six. And he will make it 600,000 to go. James Mackey, our chip leader. They call him Mig. He will make the call with an ace eight. And the local Muckle Pahuja has a king queen. He's also going to call Muckle, the hottest player on the circuit this year, three times at a final table on the World Poker Tour. Yeah, it's his fifth cash this season as well. So here we go, three-way action. The flop comes queen, five, four. Good flop for Muckle. He's out in front with two queens. Both James and Muckle check. 975. Eric's going to take a stab at it with the sixes. 975. You're certainly going to bet that if your opponent's checked to you. Only one overcard out there. James Mackey, the 28 year old, is going to get out of their way. And Muckle, of course, hitting top pair. Oh, he is going to check raise, Vince. And a healthy check raise up to 2.45 million. I call. And a quick call by Eric. Eric with the sixes. So a big pot happening, deuce of diamonds. diamonds. Muckle still out in front with the two queens. He's reaching for betting chips. And it looks like a lot of them. About 3.2 million. And that deuce does give Eric a gut shot straight draw to go along with his two sixes, but he is far behind right now. They call. But it's not slowing him down. He's gonna call here, Vance. So massive pot brewing here. Over 13 million in the pot now. Nine of diamonds on the river. Uncle's only got a little bit less than five million left here. Oh. He's going all in. His opponent's been slow playing a giant hand. He's just knocked out. He knows that, but. Uh, yeah, look, 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 look. But he's happy to hear this kind of chatter out of Eric. And now wanting him to call. No one would have been a snap call if he would have beat his hand. Four million six hundred and twenty-five K. I call. Cool. Wow, he is going to call it and pay for it. Muckle Pahuja is going to double up and retake the chip lead. The heater that I'm on right now, it's, 
it's really difficult to put into words. I remember watching the World Poker Tour when I was younger and you know, just watching some of these guys have these unbelievable years. And I watched Grinder go back to back, Daniel Negreanu win two the same year. You don't think you're ever going to do something like that. I mean, to think like that is just crazy. All I've ever tried to do is just try to get better every day and I'm on this insane heater where everything is just going my way. My timing is good. My play, I think, has been pretty good. Making hands, clearing people, avoiding bad beats. I can just focus on my game and focus on what I can control and hopefully just continue to put myself in this kind of a position. Winning a World Poker Tour title would be just one of the top things to accomplish in this industry and to win a title and to have something, you know, really tangible to look down at and say, this is what I've worked for so long. It would be a watershed moment. Well, Michael, very intelligent player, running good, playing good. There you see his wife, Alexis, his dog, Bandit, in the house watching him tonight. Yeah, what a rush he's been on. Not many guys Six. bring their dogs to the final table, Vince. You got to love it. All right, James Mackey's raised with King Six. Michael out, Eric calling with King Nine. Here we go. Here comes a flop. Queen Jack Five with two diamonds. This gives Mackey the flush draw. Eric checks. Eric has the gut shot straight draw. And the best hand at the moment, but Mackey has the flush draw. Seven. Yep, he's betting 700 grand. Eric not going anywhere, he's calling. Now a nine comes off, so this gives Eric two nines as well as a straight draw. And it goes check, check. And now Eric's got to be feeling good about the nines. Now the board pairs jacks. So no flush for Mackey. Eric Six. He's going to bet 600,000 here, thinking his jacks and nines are the best hand, which indeed they are. So all of a sudden, the flush draw evaporates into nothing, as well as chips if he makes this call. But he doesn't. He lays it down. So James Mackey, known as MIG, goes out. You're so disciplined, it's for, you know, I know I have your number today, but you know how much the minimum you lose? I swear to God, it's not a joke, you'll see it. It's like you're losing the minimum every time. Even if it's classic, but you lose the minimum. It's, it's amazing. It's definitely a form of respect. You tell your opponent every time I beat you, I only win the minimum off you. Yeah. I like the person who lied to everyone at the table. <laughs> All right, back to the table. Here we go. Muckle now. Is he has gone out, but Eric Afriot with Ace King just calling. Eric calls. Trying to disguise the power of his hand. Mackey going to check as well. Here we go. Flop comes up 874, helping neither player. Now Eric is going to check the Ace King. James has to bet that garbage if he wants to win the pot. 325,000, but quickly called by Eric. Turn card, Jack of Diamonds. Well, Eric checks again. Will Mackey have the heart to bet again? He's got a gut shot straight draw now. He's going to bet it. Yep, 625. I'll give him credit for firing out there and betting that hand. I'm glad I checked. <laughs> Trigger. You would have seen fireworks. <laughs> I can imagine. That's the smile of a bluffer, James Mackey. James from Kansas City, Missouri. One tough young pro. I started out playing $5 home games in my dorms with my friends. And after about a year of slowly building it up, I decided I would go pro and play full time. I won a bracelet within the first 10 live tournaments I ever played. It, uh, poker seemed real easy then for me because I just won right away. I got seventh in a WPT at the Seminole two years ago and just missed out on the TV final table, so happy to be here. I believe, you know, the more times you get deep in big tournaments, the more experienced you become. And having some painful losses in the past just helps you prepare better for the future. So I think getting seventh back then will help me now. Well, I would agree. It's the pain you take when you lose that makes you better. Gives you a better chance to win later on. You learn from those lessons. Or you, you quit and you've retired <laughs> and you watch this on TV. I don't know. Oh. But he hey, didn't. This guy was studying pre-med. He gave that up to play poker. <laughs> He's doing quite well. First Loves animals, though. Says he may go back and be a vet sometime. That's nice. Wouldn't that be nice, though? 
Mackie's got to appreciate the fact that Muckles brought his dog to the final. <laughs> well, Mackie this time has a pair of jacks, has raised. Muckle has folded. Eric, though, with a 10 8, will stick around. Now, flop is 7 6 5, two spades. As you can see, Eric with the open end straight draw checks. And James bets 600,000. 1.4. Raises. The check raise with the open end straight draw to 1.4 million by Eric. And you're fearful your opponent's got two pair. Might have flopped a straight, but I just don't see how you get away from Jack's here. At least not yet. Nope, he's going to call that. And the clothing man is praying for a straight. Not to happen there. Six pairs the board. Well, Vince, once you start bluffing, you almost have to continue bluffing if you want to win the pot. 950. That's what Eric is going to try to do here. 950,000 is the bet. But as I said, I don't see James going anywhere with a big over pair like this, and he's not. He has made the call. Last card coming up. It's a queen of spades. Now, both players might be afraid their opponent made a flush, but... Eric checks. Well, Eric is just waving the white flag, giving this pot up. Mackey's going to check as well. Well, he just didn't want to get check raised out of this pot. Turns up the Jack's going to win it with him. So the man from Kansas City, James Mackey, they call him Mig. He's a great online player. He's got a World Series bracelet. We'll take this one down. Ten would have been nice, though. He's our chip leader. He's going to be tough. We'll be right back with more after a quick pause in the action. Season 12 of the World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com, where VIP members can win their share of 100000 in cash and prizes every month. ClubWPT.com, never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. We're at the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown, and they are playing for close to 1.1 million here tonight. And the Andes are 50,000, but the blinds are going up to two and 400,000, Mike. And as you can see, Michael Pahuja squeaked back into the lead, just slightly over James Mackey. Eric Alfriot has to come from behind if he's gonna win this tournament. Action with the button. James Mackey with an eight, seven, has raised to 800,000. Muckle out. And Eric. And then he's got the Highway Patrol hand bench, the 10 4. 2.1. He is getting oh. out raising chips with this junk hand. 2.1 million to bet now. Just a 10 4. He's got guts and he's going to oh, win this pot. Boy. As they say at the Highway Patrol bench, which is the 10 4 hand, over and out. The experience of the Blind Cup was amazing. After the first few hours of the tournament, that's what came really glancing. Just remember, you can interview me at the final table. And uh, five days later, she interviewed me to the final table. This tournament here had the same vibe. After the second day, I just had the same magic. You just feel it. You just know that uh, something's going to happen. Oh, boy. On day two, you just know what's going to happen. How do they know that? <laughs> Happy-go-lucky, very positive person. Someone turn off. What a game he's got. Oh, like, uh, Very impressive from the Canadian. All right, Knuckle picks up the King Jack suited on the button here. He's going to raise it like everybody would, 800,000. But right behind him, Eric's got two kings. Unbelievable. 1.6. Eric has played so aggressive at this final table. He gets a premium hand. Good chances he'll get paid off with it. Well, he's raised to 1.6. James Mackey goes out. Back on Muckle, making the call. And the flop comes out, queen 6-3. Six, yeah, no help for Muckle there. 800. Eric going to bet 800,000. Well, Muckle has nothing but a backdoor flush draw and a backdoor straight draw, but he's going to make the call here, Vince. He could be stepping into quicksand here. Turn card. Yeah, deuce, of deuce of diamonds. That may actually save Muckle some money. Eric is going to check two kings here. Muckle checks right behind him. And now a jack comes off. Well, this will spell trouble for Muckle. 2.5. If indeed Eric bets, which he's doing, 2.5 million. Vince, when your opponent checks on the turn and the queen high board, 
I don't see how you can possibly throw two jacks away here. You would not think so. Oh. There's the donation. King's oh, calls. The call by Muckle. You can't blame him for calling the way this hand was played. What a crafty check it turned out to be by Eric on the turn there. Otherwise, he doesn't get the action on the river. So Eric taking down that pot with two kings. The Whoa. businessman from Montreal mixing up his play well tonight, no doubt about it. <laughs> well, as you can see, with that pot, Muckle went from chip leader to third place in this three-handed battle of a record-breaking field of 1,795 entrants. Why is it 200 and 400? Now James Mackey with a pair of sevens. Eight. I'm gonna bet 800,000 here. Muckle folds. Yeah, Eric with the queen 10 and wants to see a flop, so he makes the call. And the flop is a 996. Yeah. No help for either player, but a good flop for James if you're holding two sevens. 600. Wow, Eric with nothing is going to try to take the play away. Makes a bet of 600 grand. Well, Vince, we've seen him lead out in the pre-flop razor time and time again at this final table. And now a queen hits, hitting Eric. He makes his queens. Well, he was bluffing on the flop. Now he's going to try to get value out of top pair here. 1.2. What a turnaround card. 1.2 million. Well, James has the flush draw to go along with the two sevens now. Not a big flush draw, of course, but... Still, you're happy to have it. He makes the call. Going to the river. And now a 10 comes off. This gives Harry Queens and tens. So he helped on the turn and the river. So he takes a conservative route and checks. Three pairs. James checks right behind him. Oh, wow. Eric turns up queen 10. Two pairs, queens and tens. You would have paid, you would have paid big money there. Let's check. I thought you could have bet out that thing. So, doesn't get the value better, but he takes the pot. Eric Afria from Montreal coming back strong. Magnifique, monsieur. I'm really excited to get going. It's my first major poker tournament, and I'm in it to win it. Poker players are, uh, you know, they're looking for an edge, they're looking for something they can beat. Basically what we do at DraftKings is we take a season of fantasy sports and condense it down to one day. I love sports, love fantasy sports, so it just makes the games more interesting. Hi, my name is Andy Albrecht. I won a fantasy football league in DraftKings.com. I think there's a lot of similarities between DraftKings and online poker. The tournament structures, uh, payouts, all of that goes hand in hand. If you're into fantasy sports as much as I am, DraftKings is an awesome site. It's a new chance every day to win something. We've got qualifiers to WPT events where you get your travel package, hotel, buy-in, all that stuff. So you can just play, uh, you know, play a $2 contest and run it up to a package to a WPT. People are really into the intellectual stimulation of poker, and people that like that are, are into the same stimulation from fantasy sports. It's all about what you can do to maximize your edge and make good decisions. And in the long run, it's the people that approach the game with the most intellectual you know, thought process that are going to be the most successful. I won my entry through DraftKings.com, which is a great site for single-day fantasy contests, and I'm looking to add my name to that trophy. The best day I've done on DraftKings, you're looking at it, brother. DraftKings! This episode of the World Poker Tour is brought to you in part by DraftKings. If you like poker and sports, then you're going to love daily fantasy sports at DraftKings. Go to DraftKings.com, enter promo code WPT, and start playing today. Welcome back to Hollywood, Florida, and the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown. Well, Mike, it's pretty incredible how many players showed up here at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, 1,795. But some of them got into the tournament through a satellite or qualified. Well, you're right, Vince. And one of those newbies that got in this tournament was a guy named John Decente, and he got in by qualifying on ClubWPT.com. That's right, Mike. Now, he didn't win the big bucks, but he got to spend some time with the Royal Flush Girls. Had a great time. He also met one of his idols in poker, and that is you, Mike Sexton. Well, we had a great time with John. He's a good guy, very enjoyable week with him, and I'm sure he had a great VIP experience here at the Seminole Hard Rock. You can do the same. Go to clubwpt.com, check it out today, become a member. Who knows, you might want a seat in a live WPT event just like John did. Clubwpt.com, never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. Let's get back down to the felt. Well, for the first time tonight, the Canadian Eric Afriot out in front with 21 million. James Mackey in second with 17 million. Muckle Pahuja in third with 15 million. Action on Muckle. 
He lives just a few miles away in a place called Coconut Creek, Florida. And he's going to go out of this hand, and now Eric. Mm. Oh, he's got a gigantic monster hand, Ace King of Spades. And he's going to start out with an eight hundred thousand dollar bet here. Right behind him, James. Let's take a look at his cards. Look at this, Vince. He yeah. picks up a pair of sevens for the second straight time. He got burned with them in the last hand. Let's see what happens here. Two million. Well, first thing he's going to do is raise it to two million. Getting aggressive. 34. Well, 3.4 million. Now the bet. So the four bet by Eric here to 3.4 million. Now what do you do with two sevens? Well, you call. That's what James is doing. Big pot brewing here between these two guys. Here's the flop. It's a jack 5-3, but there's two spades out there. Gives Eric the nut flush draw. 1.6. 1.6 million is the bet. Yeah, Eric's going to bet on the four flush. James with just a pair of sevens. Yeah. Don't see you throwing this hand away here just yet for that size bet, and James is making the call. Yep, he's going to invest deeper. So right now, the two sevens out in front. Going to the turn card. Eric would like to hit a spade, and he gets the spade! The dream card comes off. Eric with a nut flush, his opponent drawing dead. Let's see how much he bets now. 1.6. 1.6 million, the pot's got over 10 million in events. Doesn't want to chase his man away, I can't blame him. Well, this a very small bet for this size pot. And it is working, Vince. He is just reeling him right in here, it looks like. Oh, Remember, man. whatever Mackie puts in there is just going over to the other guy's stack because he is drawing dead. He doesn't know it, though, and he has made the call and to the river card. It's a six, so Eric still with the absolute nuts. What's the right amount to get to extract from your victim? Let's find out. 13.3 million in the pot right now. Six million. Well, he's going to make the bionic bet. Six million. Yeah. This a good size bet here now. And now what do you do if you're Mackey? You know all you can beat is a bluff here. The guy four bet you before the flop. What if he had ace king of diamonds, for example? Would he be betting the same way? Would your two sevens be oh, good? Oh, boy, he's going to call. That's, That's what I was about. Complete devastation here for Mackey. Look at his face. Well, the two sevens. Whoever said seven's a lucky number is not going to convince James Mackey of that. He's had four sevens in two hands and got burned both times. Well, it's the mix-up plays of Eric Afriat. He has been bluffing so many hands tonight. This time, gets the nuts, gets paid off in a big way, and he extends a chip lead. Unbelievable. Well, Eric just loving life down here in Florida. I'm Tuba, one of the Royal Flush Girls. Florida is my hometown. Seminole Hard Rock is definitely one of my favorite stops. All week we've been hanging out with the players, but yesterday Tuba and I got a day off and we were able to enjoy the property, and it's amazing. We went to their new man cave, which was really cool. It featured a whole stocked refrigerator and my own personal pool. We had a fireplace, we were able to watch the game on TV. It was amazing. Well, Vince, when you get bikini beauties like that in your man cave, you have got a man cave. <laughs> They're invited at any time. They are having a great time, as are we, as three players battle it out at the Seminole Hard Rock Showdown. Well, how about this Eric Afria? He was in a distant last place not long ago. Now he's in a distant first place. Incredible, 33 million in chips now. Okay, onto this hand. Muckle is gonna quickly fold his hand. Eric, exuding confidence right now. He's got a 10-7 this time. And he will splash around with that junk hand. James with a 10-6 of hearts. Happy to see a flop here with the 10-6. The flop is a 6-5-4. That gives sixes to Mackey. Well, Eric has an open end straight draw. Mackey has top pair. All in. Oh, and he's going to go all in with the sixes. I call. And a quick call by Eric Afriat. With two cards to come. Eric with the possibility of knocking out this young man from Kansas City. Can he get it straight there? No, another six. Gives three of a kind there to Mackey. Now Eric must make the straight to win, must catch a three or an eight. Nothing else will do. Otherwise, Mackey will double up and get back in the hunt. And it's a jack of hearts, so that's exactly what's going to happen. James Mackey is going to take down this hand with three of a kind. 
Five. So with that double up, James Mackey is back in town. Very nicely done. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Hollywood, Florida and the WPT Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown. Florida is known as the Sunshine State. And right now, here to illuminate us on tonight's play is Tony Dunst in this edition of The Raw Deal. We just witnessed back-to-back -back hands that seemed like mere images. In both hands, James Mackey had pocket sevens against Eric Afriot, 22. whose overcards improved on the turn. Eric was able to get value in both hands. So did James make the same mistake twice or just suffer some bad deja vu? Let's break it down. The action begins with James opening his first pocket sevens for a min raise on the button. Eric calls in the big blind with queen 10 and leads out on 699 with two diamonds. I'm not sure why Eric is leading this hand when he doesn't have a diamond and few better hands fold. And James has an easy call with his sevens. When the turn brings Eric's queen, he bets small again for about quarter pot. James can't be thrilled with that turn card, but he also can't fold with his mid pair and diamond draw, so he calls again. It's no surprise James checked behind the river when Eric checked, and round Three one pairs. goes to Eric's top two pair. Oh, wow. Eric turns up. The next hand, we see Eric open the action with ace king suited in the small blind, and James three bets him in position with pocket sevens. When James made his three bet, I thought he was planning to get stacks all in pre-flop. 34. So perhaps the tiny sizing of Eric's four bet made him concerned, and he opted to call instead. What happens next looks like James calling down three barrels with too weak a hand, but pay attention to the bet sizing. On the jack 5-3 flop, Eric bets just 20% pot. So of course James won't fold when there are overcards Eric can be bluffing with. The turn completes Eric's flush, and again he bets tiny, this time less than 15% pot. Again, James is easily priced into calling, and they see a six of hearts on the river. Now Eric finally ups his bet sizing and fires out six million. And while that's way more than 1.6 million, it's still less than one third pot. James only needs to have the best hand a quarter of the time to make calling profitable, and that seems likely against someone who bluffs as much as Eric. So James reluctantly calls and gets shown the bad news nice. that he's been value bet again. That's what I was worried about. So, did James make the same mistake twice? Nah, he was just calling down with showdown value against an opponent who bluffs too much. It's kind of like that famous George W. quote. Fool me once. Shame on, shame on you. You fool me, you can't get fooled again. I don't know whether it was Bob Dylan or I don't know what he's doing anymore. Well, one thing for sure, Tony, you won't be fooling us with your impressions. Well, all I know is this, two sevens are not working for Mackey tonight. <laughs> all right, Eric Offrey at this chip leader, 31 million. Let's go to the felt, a quick fold by the man from Montreal. Oh, no. It's not possible, Vince. Oh, what? Another pair of sevens for James Mackey. That is not possible. That's Wouldn't you shocking. just instant muck him right now? Pretty amazing. He makes it a million dollars to go with the sevens. And Muckle now with Dolly Parton, nine to five. He's getting his chips out to invest. Yes, he calls. So, pair of sevens versus nine five. And the flop is a jack, nine eight. So three over cards to your two sevens there. Mackey's gonna check. Muckle checks the two nines right behind him. Eight of hearts pairs the board. Mackey's had enough with the sevens. Checks again. Well, Muckle just didn't want to get check raised out of the pot, so he checks the nines again. Now a queen comes off and a spade. Possible straight, possible flush. They both check again. Muckle shows the nines. And James. Oh, wow. He disgustingly throws down the two sevens. And Vince, I'll tell you one thing, anybody that comes up to him and says seven is a lucky number is liable to get punched in the nose. <laughs> this guy's going broke with him. The yep. two walking sticks, he's going to be walking out of here because of them. He is steaming like a cheap economy car. Things have turned the wrong way for James Mackey, but right back on him this time with the button. He quickly mucks a 10-5. And now Muckle with an ace-queen of spades. Ooh. 
but he just limps in. He's hoping this aggressive player raises him, but Eric with a seven deuce just makes the call. Doesn't raise, but it flops a flush. Oh, wow. And unbelievable muckles flop. Top pair with top kicker and checks. Just incredible. Eric has flopped the flush. And Eric checks right behind him, so both slow playing their hand. Now aces and queens for mm. Muckle. Incredible. Well, he is going to bet now, but he better put his seatbelt on soon. It's 550 to the man with the flush. 1.1. And there's the raise. And it's the min raise, Vince, to 1.1 million. All right. Smart min raise. Well, no way Muckle's going anywhere, that's for sure. He makes the call. Knows his opponent could have a flush, could have a straight, but aces and queens, the top two pair, you're going nowhere. River card, three of clubs, perfect card for Eric. Muckle's going to wisely check this. Two million. Two million with the flush. And a quick call. It's ridiculous how good you are, my God. Muckle just can't believe how lucky this guy's getting. Oh, boy. The man from Montreal, the businessman, is making these pros talk to themselves. But I'll tell you, Eric plays such a mix-up game. Great deception. And that's what's paying it off for him. Making some great moves here tonight. He extends his chip lead. Now right back on Muckle. He's got a pair of nines. And he will raise to 800,000. Eric gets out of his way. James Mackey with a king seven of clubs. All in. And he says all in. All in and a quick call by Muckle. Well, I'm surprised Mackey would move all in with a seven in his hand. Unlucky as that card's been for him, but <laughs> let's see if we can get lucky here. Muckle has him covered, so James Mackey's tournament life on the line. He loses, he'll be out in third place. Five cards to come. Here we go, Mike. 10 6 deuce. Save for the nines right now, James. Behind at this point. Buckle in front. Ready to break his 28 year old opponent. Here goes the turn. And it's a queen. No help for James. Well, there you see. Muckle's wife, Alexis, and the dog bandit sweating the river card here. James Mackey, WSOP, bracelet winner in a lot of trouble. He's a river out here. Let's take a look. Can he catch his king? Here it comes. It's a jack. Well, that's going to do it for the 28-year-old James Mackey from Kansas City, Missouri. Great effort this week, out tonight in third place. James Mackey is sackied out of here. 441, he'll take home. Good job, James. A big effort, a great player. Let's talk to him. I'm not too happy, obviously. I uh, made a hero call, went wrong against Eric. That's how it goes. And so yeah, very disappointed. Impressive run by James Mackey, our third place finisher. It's now down to Mukul Pahuja and Eric Afriat to battle it out for the title. Heads up action from the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown is coming up next on the WPT. Welcome back to the WPT Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown, where the heads up battle is about to begin between Mukul Pahuja and Eric Afriat. The Royal Flush Girls, Tuba and Angelique, are bringing out the money, plus the special 24K monster headphones that will be awarded to our champion. Before play starts back up, check out the conversation I had with both players on the break. Now, of course, we're on your home turf. Do you think that that's a little bit of an advantage for you, having all the support from your family and friends? Yeah, definitely. I have support wherever I go, but it's always nice to be home. My wife here, my dog here, yeah. and uh, all my friends and stuff. So he's got a lot of support, too. It's a fun atmosphere. Um, you know, it's going to be fun. All right, well, good luck. All right, thank you. Eric, here you are, heads up, with possibly the toughest player at this final table. Tough, even scary, just to give you an idea. Really? I thought I was a scary player to play against, but I think <laughs> I, I met my match, so this is going to be a great heads up match. 
Who will be named the champion of the largest event in WPT history? Heads up action is about to start, so let's get back to the call of the game with Mike and Vince. As we start out heads up play, Eric Afriot out in front. He was the lone non-professional at the table, but yet never seemed intimidated by any of those guys. Seemed to play more aggressive yeah. than everybody at the sure table. Did. And here he is with a big chip lead, playing heads up for the title. $50,000, Andy, 250 and 500 are the blinds at this point. It's going to be exciting. Let's go to the felt. Muckle on the button here, going to raise it up to a million with the A6. Eric with a decent queen jack. Offsuit makes this call. Here we go. And the flop is a 10-7-7. Helps neither player. And you know the game's out of the mud when a min raises to a million. That is true. Eric's going to check. And Muckle with the ace high. The continuation bet of a half a million. And Eric uh, quickly calls him with the queen jack. Yeah, he's going to get stubborn. Turn card is another 10. So 10s and 7s. Eric checks again. Muckle checks as well. Four spades on the river. Eric checks again. Now Muckle now believes his ace high is the best hand, so he's going to bet the two pair with the ace high. Yeah. 950,000 is the bet. And Vince, if you're in Eric's seat, you're saying, hmm, what can I beat here? Maybe a weak flush draw? I call. He's going to call it. So he pays it off with just a queen high. Some would call that a hero call. He was hoping his opponent had some kind of straight draw on the flop. All right, even though he took a hit right there, Eric Afriot is still flush with chips, thanks in part to the monster hand of the day. That's right, Vance. Not really any love lost between Eric and Muckle. They've been battling all night long. Earlier, Muckle let Eric see a free flop with a seven deuce of diamonds, and lo and behold, the Canadian flop day monster flush. Eric slow played it and was then able to extract over three million in chips from Muckle when he had top two pair. That's so ridiculous how good you are, my God. And that definitely got under his skin. Well, we've got quite a heads up battle brewing. Stick around for more on the World Poker Tour. Next time. Club WPT is the only place where you can play as much poker as you'd like to win a share of $100,000 in cash and prizes every month but without the downside risk. ClubWPT.com, never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. Welcome back to Seminole Hard Rock in Hollywood, Florida. All right, we got a heads up battle here at the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown. Eric Afri up from Montreal with 40 million. Muckle Pahuja, the local hottest player on the tour with about 13.4 million. All right, action's gonna be on Muckle. He's got a queen nine this time. Blinds at 250, 500. Muckle's just calling. Yeah, limps in on the button here with the queen nine. One more. Perhaps lucky to do so because Eric has an ace jack of hearts and he will raise. Yeah, shoots it up a million more. And Muckle. Uh, wants to see a flop, so he's going to make the call here. Here we go. Ace jack versus queen nine, and it is a jack seven eight. How well is Eric running top pair, top kicker? One million. He's going to bet one million is all. With the jacks. And Muckle with the gut shot straight makes the call. Muckle. Ten coming off of there. Can he get his ten? No, an ace appears that gives aces and jacks to Eric. Yeah, top two pair for Eric, but with possible flushes and possible straights out there. No chance to check raise on this. He's going to lead right out and bet 1.4 million. That's going to get the job done as Muckle folds. So Eric extends his chip lead. It's not a good turn for you. Eric Alfred, 44 years old. He's got family and friends here that flew in from Montreal to watch this display of poker. And it is working out so beautifully right now. Can he close? Well, he might be a non-pro, Vince, but he's been playing poker for 25 years, so certainly has experience. A million. 
Well, here he goes. He's got a pair of eights and has raised to a million. One million. Muckle behind him with a king nine. Now, Muckle knows this guy could raise with any two cards, especially with his chip lead. All in. Whoa. So he's going all in with a king nine. Hey, Cole. And Eric's going to make this call. This is my flip. This is my flip in this tournament. Muckle Pahuja must win this pot to stay alive in this tournament. Otherwise, the amateur businessman from Canada will be our champion. Oh, big, boy, Muckle Pahuja going to the rail. Everybody on their feet. There's the Canadian contingent. Here we go with the flop, Mike. And the flop is a 5-5 five, five deuce. That's good for Eric Afriot. Well, Muckle must catch a king or a nine now to take the lead. Eric can't believe it. He's laughing there. Loves that flop. Muckle disappointed, obviously. Will the snowman stand up? That's the question. Going to the turn. And fourth street is a ten of diamonds. So we are down to the river. Muckle Pahuja must catch a king or a nine to have any hopes of winning this tournament or it's over. Well, a major upset, one card away. We will see if the Canadian can take down this huge title. Well, Eric Afriot in prayer mode right now. Can he dodge a king or a nine? He has done it. Wow. It's over. What a story for Eric Afriot. Oh, man, an incredible effort for the Canadian right now. Eric's going to take down his title, take home. 1.1 million. Before we talk to our champion, how about a hats off and a salute to Muckle Pahuja, our runner up tonight, and the guy who's far and away the leader for the WPT Player of the Year. I was hoping to make heads up a little bit more of a battle, but uh, may have gotten a little impatient, may have uh, pushed it a little bit, but you know, he got some strong hands right away to start, and I couldn't uh, make something happen. Eric! Yes. All I can say is magnifique, monsieur. Magnifique. <laughs> magnifique it is. A fantastic performance by you. You came to this final table in fourth chip position. It seemed like you were the most aggressive player at the table all night long. You were the lone non-professional at the table, and yet you stood up to these guys. Was that your game plan coming to this final table um, to take it to them? Honestly, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. I was just uh, really going with the flow, just taking it easy, just uh, playing my position, just playing, uh, just just playing the you know just playing the right cards, and being aggressive at the right time. Well, you certainly were that. Congratulations on a magnificent performance at this final table. In addition to over one million dollars that you. The World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. The WPT World Championship has found a new home at Borgata, and this one has all the makings of a classic. Tonight on the WPT. Well, the crowd all standing. He is circling the drain. They are going bare knuckles in the center of the ring. He would love to knock this Hi everybody, welcome to the World Poker Tour. I'm Lynn Gilmartin. The WPT World Championship is the most prestigious event on our tour and for the first time in 12 seasons, it is being held right here in Atlantic City at the fantastic Borgata Hotel, Casino and Spa. Five days ago, the best and brightest from around the world ponied up the $15,000 buy-in and took their seats to prove they have what it takes to win the final and most coveted title of the season. For the first time in 12 seasons, the WPT World Championship has landed at Borgata. This season's event would feature two starting days and a buy-in of $15,000. We're in the signature room here at Borgata. It's a smaller field, a lot of people know each other in this field, I think, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's comfortable for, you know, a bigger tournament going on. Looking around the room, every table was packed with WPT champions and tough pros. And New Jersey native Tom Marchese had some thoughts about why today's field was so tough. I think tomorrow will be softer. I you figure like amateur players who are only going to play once, they're more likely to come in tomorrow. I'd rather try to get through today and if 
Worst case scenario, I lose, I'll give it another shot tomorrow. Also in the field was poker pro Justin Young, who had his eyes on a strong finish to season 12. In general, I am running really hot. Uh, the last two WPTs I played, uh, I got 16th in uh, Bay 101 and 13th down in Florida. So hoping to do a little bit better on this tournament, but uh, it's been a really fun ride the last two tournaments. But the day's ride would come to an end for some Season 12 WPT champions, including Dan Smith, Mohsin Charania and James Carroll. With the field starting to thin out, we were joined by the always fashionably late Phil Helmuth, who had his focus on the title. And a man who has already won this title once, Season 10 WPT World Champion Marvin Rettenmeyer. I'm going to get in there. I'm going to build up a big stack. I'm going to take it to the final table and I'm going to win this tournament. Though play was not solely reserved for the veterans of the poker circuit, as NFL wide receiver Miles Austin was all in with ace 10 of diamonds against the pocket queens of poker pro all Paul in. Volpe. Queens. When the cards it's were tabled, Miles knew he was behind, but his fortune changed as he hit two pair on the flop and scored a seat into day two. The day ended with 62 survivors of the 105 players who entered on day 1A. Many tough players remained, and even after doubling up Miles Austin, Paul Volpe had the chip lead with over 215,000 in chips. I had a good table draw, and there was several good players on it, but a lot of the tables, the other tables had all very good players. A new day of poker kicked off at Borgata with a fresh batch of players. Plus those who had busted the previous day taking another shot. We caught up with poker pro Kara Scott about the WPT World Championship moving to the East Coast. I love the fact that it's here because it's a lot easier for me to get to because I live in Europe. So this is like still a little jet lag, but nowhere near where it would have been for like Vegas. Looking to play a perfect tournament was the only player that could catch WPT Player of the Year leader Mukul Bahuja, two-time season 12 finalist Sean Suller. Sean faced an uphill battle as he needed a first place finish to surpass Mukul. It's pretty easy. Just gotta win it. We came a close a couple times this season, so we got one more shot to get it done. The day saw several season 12 ones to watch looking to make the most of their last event of the season. Athanasius Polychronopoulos was on the upswing. Christina Lindley and Lonnie Harwood were in good stride, while Aaron Massey was on a bit of a roller coaster ride. Feeling so damn good right now. Yeah. Enough chips to win the tournament. Down to my last eight big blinds of the WPT season. First double up. One step at a time, never say die. Well, that's it, that's a wrap. It was a really good season, I enjoyed everything about the WPT, man. You, you guys are gonna see me next year, I'll be back. I won't be a once to watch, but I'm gonna be a member of that Champions Club eventually. Also hitting the rail was WPT Champions Club member James Calderaro. It was a great season, we came in strong on the end and uh, everything worked out well. And Hands like this that cracked me. You know, I could have went a lot deeper in Florida, Jacksonville. The day ended with 138 surviving the 223 entrants who took a shot on day 1B. Poker pro Justin Young made the most of his second bullet. Athanasius Polychronopoulos scored the second spot on the leaderboard. And finishing strong with the chip lead was Jason Kuhn. They usually don't have good cards, but today was a good day. <laughs> Day two kicked off with the 200 surviving players returning to the signature room at Borgata. The two day one flights saw a total of 328 entrants create a prize pool of $5 million with the over $1.3 million first place prize. No camera, three times. Fresh off his victory at the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Showdown, Eric Afriat needed some help as he had limped into day two as one of the short stacks. I'm blowing chips. I'm going to fight my way through. Uh, by the end of the day, 400k. Unfortunately, Eric faced an uphill battle with every table seemingly stacked with WPT champions and tough pros. The attorney is a total nightmare. Brock Parker got chips even though he came in short. I don't know if anyone's more solid than Lee Markold. He'll just never get a chip away. I mean, there's just a bunch of killers. Joe Searock and then uh, Kirk Colbert's fierce, man. He is like the little cute old guy, but he's insane. He's like probably the most aggressive person on the table. One early elimination was Mukul Pahuja, who would not be able to add any points to his WPT Player of the Year lead. Also ending their tournament were several players who had a monster season, including WPT Montreal finalist Lily Coletto, Ronit Shamani, who cashed six times during season 12, 
and champion of the Brogata Poker Open, Anthony Zeno. This season has been great, man. I have my big score finally. I've been working so hard for for years, and I've been able to be more relaxed about everything else in life. It's been fun, you know, it's just uh, playing with some of the best in the world. After going all in with Queen Jack, the short stacked Sean Suller was called by the pocket tens of Dan Watt. No help on the board eliminated Sean from the tournament and lopped out the WPT Player of the Year title for Mukul Bahuja. For my first season, it was the best I can ask for besides first place. We got close to first place a couple times, so I think next year we'll put my name on that cup. When play came to an end, 68 players remained. In an unbelievable turnaround, Eric Afriat, who came into the day with just 34,000, finished as chip leader with over 1 million in chips. In my life I learned to play with no cards. So now I'm getting blessed with such amazing cards. It's like the game became easy. Eric had a huge lead over the season 12 ones to watch Athanasius Polychronopoulos, followed by Jason Kuhn, who also cracked the half a million mark leading into day three. <laughs> Play shifted to the Borgata Poker Room on day three, and the remaining 68 players settled in for some intense action. Poker pro Maurice Hawkins knew what would happen when the field hit 36 players. I think you get paid a little bit of money, but in first is second, maybe even third, that's a good spot. Gotta represent. Three-time WPT finalist and self-described psycho ninja, Kurt Kohlberg's colourful wardrobe matched his colourful personality and attracted the attention of royal flush girl Ivy Tevez. We're a match made in heaven, you can tell. There you go. <laughs> Amazing. Phil Helmuth, who has cashed in four previous WPT World Championships, is having a rough day, but in classic form. I, I'd like to see <laughs> no bluff, We would all love to see a bluff right now. Tonight. Yes! Yes! It's over! High five, sir. <laughs> Local poker player Catherine Devo was full of emotion, playing in the biggest buy-in event of her poker career. I was really, really nervous to start the day, but the nerves have calmed down, but now I'm really excited because we're down to 57 players. And once you make the money, you can really play poker. Nerves were not exclusive to the rookies. Even experienced players like Season 10 of Borgata Poker Open champion Bobby Abudi felt the vibe in the room. It's a different sort of atmosphere being the 15K in the player championship. It's definitely a little bit more stressful, not even just for the money, but for the prestige of the event. Borgata, hometown, I'd like to do well. After going all in with Ace 6, Phil Helmuth was called by Byron Carverman, who dominated Phil with Ace Queen. No help on the board sent Phil home just short of his fifth WPT World Championship cash. It seems completely unfair to me. This is when I play this great, this championship event. I've been there so many times, can't seem to win it. Down to 38, players went on a dinner break as two hands finished up. In one hand, Kurt Kohlberg called the all in bet of Michael Lavoie with Pocket Kings. Michael turned over Ace Queen and failed to improve as the board ran out, sending him home short of the money. While in the other hand, Maurice Hawkins knocked out WPT Champions Club member Mick Shulman. We're in the money! We're in the money! The back-to-back -back eliminations burst the money bubble, although most players were unaware as they were enjoying dinner. I'm thrilled. I can't believe you're telling me this. I think I can enjoy my dinner now. Safely in the money, play did open up and the eliminations piled up. One of the first players knocked out was season 12 ones to watch Athanasius Polychronopoulos, who reflected on his season. Generally, I just had a good time. I love it here at the Borgata. It's like my home casino. It's where I play the most. So when the championship was supposed to be held here, I was like, oh yeah, easy. I'm going to win. No problem. Sweet. Athanasius was followed out the door by fellow ones to watch Lonnie Harwood in 29th and season 12 Legends of Poker champion Jordan Christos in 27th. Also hitting the rail were Maurice Hawkins and Catherine Deaver, whose confidence was high after playing against this strong field. I don't think they're that much different than the people I play with on a regular basis. I, I actually found that out. They weren't as tough as I thought they were going to be. With Jeff Madsen's bust out in 19th place, play ended for the day.
The 18 remaining players would return for day four to play down to the televised final table. Maintaining the top spot on the leaderboard for the second day in a row was the newest WPT champion, Eric Afriat, who was looking for back-to-back -back victories. Honestly, I'm more confident than ever. All the tough guys, they're all gone. So now it's like I feel like it's getting a little easier. Eric may have felt the tough players were gone, but the field was still full of stone cold killers. The remaining players are in the money, but who has what it takes to survive and make it to the final table? Find out when we return on the WPT. Welcome back to Borgata and the World Poker Tour's coverage of the season ending WPT World Championship. 18 players took to the felt on day four to play down to the televised final table. Four WPT champions remained alive, each with a shot at a second title, including our very own Raw Deal analyst, Tony Dunn. There's so much on the line, and this is just such a thrilling point in the tournament, so I'm feeling good. Also feeling confident was season 12 LAPC runner-up, Glenn LeFay. I entered four WPTs so far this year, and I cashed in three of them now. So I'm feeling pretty good. Even though I got the chip leader on my left, I feel like he's loose and I feel like I can double up a couple times again. Glenn had his sights set on Eric Afriat, but it was Byron Carverman who would be his downfall. After calling his all-in bet pre-flop, Byron hit his straight draw on the river to beat Glenn's pocket sevens and eliminate him from the tournament. After deep runs at Bay 101 and Seminole Hard Rock, Justin Young fell short of making his second WPT World Championship final table when he was knocked out in 15th place. Season 10 Borgata Poker Open champion Bobby Abudi fell short of his second WPT title at the hands of poker pro Kevin Starman. And after his monster back-to-back -back deep tournament runs, Eric Afriat was sent home in 11th place. The Canadian champion took his elimination in stride. Last week was a dream, winning the WPT of the Hard Rock. Coming back here, uh, chip leader, two straight days in a row, I'm delighted. But I always have a philosophy that chip leader never wins. <laughs> Down to 10 players, poker pro Brock Parker was knocked out after running his pocket nines into the pocket kings of Kurt Kohlberg. Byron Carverman, who had already secured a record-breaking seventh WPT cash in a single season, was in the chip lead, followed closely by Kevin Starman. With just seven players remaining, a huge pot developed between three of the chip leaders. On a queen nine eight board, WPT champion Anthony Gregg checked to Kevin Starman, who bet holding the nuts and was called by Byron and Anthony. The nine of clubs on the turn gave Anthony trips. Both he and Kevin checked to Byron, who made a bet. Anthony then check raised to one million, followed by a three bet from Kevin. Byron got out of the way and Anthony's shove was immediately called by Kevin. The ace of clubs on the river sealed Anthony's fate and the final table was set. The final six were comprised of four tough pros in their 20s and two seasoned businessmen, all of whom had the skill and experience to take down the most prestigious title of the season. Now for more analysis on tonight's players, let's turn to Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. So Mike, what can you say about the consistency in play this season of our two chip leaders, Kevin Starman and Byron Carverman? Well, Lynn, the consistency of Kevin and Byron this season has been remarkable. The question is, can one of these guys put a cherry on top of this season by taking down their first WPT title tonight? We shall see. Mike, I have five caches too, you know. Did you know? Yeah, they have six. <laughs> <laughs> And Vince, how about the remaining players making this final table? Well, there's some great players at this final table, but let's talk about the guy, first of all, that looks like he's been finger painting on his jacket again. <laughs> that is, there he is, the great Kurt Kohlberg. Yeah, Kurt, Very entertaining player. He's made four yeah. WPT Come final on. tables. Can he take home a championship? We will see. But then there's also our wonderful Tony Dunst. Yeah. Proving that our impeccably dressed raw deal guy is actually the real deal because he's going after his second WPT title this season. He's incredible. And right now, he's going over to talk to Matt Savage. Thanks, Vince. Tony, your last final table you came in as a chip leader. Tonight, you're one of the short stacks. Mm -hmm. What's it going to take to get it done? 
I mean, it's probably going to take winning some coin flips, cooling some people. You got to run good to win any tournament, but especially when you come in low on the ladder. What's so special about the WPD Championship title? I mean, it's the most prestigious one we have. It's a $15,000 event, and any time you have an opportunity to collect a seven-figure score, I think that's, you know, prestigious by itself. All right, Lynn, let's see if he's got what it takes to get it done tonight. Thanks, Matt. So who will be named the final champion of Season 12? Play at the WPT World Championship final table is about to get underway. So let's get down to the felt. Well, there you see the chip counts brought to you by Skrill. Kevin Stallman out in front with 5.6 million. Byron Coverman in second place with four million events. These two guys grew up within 45 minutes of each other. Amazing. They're here in first and second place. That's what they're playing for. The winner tonight getting over 1.3 million. Let's get going. Annie's will be 5,000. Blinds 25 and 50,000. Action on the young guy from Vegas, Ryan D'Angelo. He's got ace high. He mucks. Kurt Kohlberg right behind him, also mucking. Action on Abraham Karaki, a local here. He's folded. Byron. Coverman with King 10 will raise. Stalman out, but Tony Dunst has picked up a pair of sevens here. Tough to play the mid pairs. How do you play them when a guy raises in front of you? All in. Well, that's how you do it. You just move in with him. He is not afraid to get knocked out on hand number one. He's going to push all in. Will he get this action? Byron with King 10. No, he's going to fold it. Well done by Tony Dunst right there to move all in and take it down. You know, he told me he was much more relaxed coming into this final table than he was when he had the big chip lead down in St. Martin, the event that he won. But yeah. he said when you're a big chip leader, the pressure is on because you're expected to win. Now he's relaxed, you know. Yeah. He's just going to let things fly. We saw that in deal number one. All right, back to the action on the non-professional, the businessman, Kurt Kohlberg who has made many final tables on the WPT. A quick fold by him. And Kurt has a master's degree in international business from MIT. Abraham also won't play. Coverman going out. Abraham with the master's at law degree. And Kevin Stallman, who used to work on a farm, Vince, he was a masonry, used to milk cows. That's the diversity we have in poker. What's on him, and he is going to raise it. You know, he looks a little like an Amish guy. <laughs> like he's been... <laughs> Cow plowing all afternoon and then gets to the poker table. But he has raised, and look who's got the sevens this time. All in. He's playing them just like Tony did. He's moving all in with them. Now he's up against a guy that can afford to make this call, though. You can't push this farm boy around, can you? He's got his king jack. Will he get stubborn? No, he's going to fold. What's up, man? Don't mess with our blinds. Don't mess with our blinds. The 28-year-old pro, Ryan D'Angelo, taking down that pot. And Vince, ironically, Tony Dunst and Ryan used to be roommates when they started out earlier in their career. Here they are sitting side by side, oh. fighting it out for a WPT championship title. Something's never changed. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more from Borgata. Borgata is my home casino, my home poker room. To be the final six is fabulous. It's a big one. It's the last one of the season. The WPT has been great this year, and I was looking to close out on a high note. Winning this event would mean the world to me. I always wanted to be a millionaire. I'd love to have a million dollars in my bank account and just have to pay buku bucks in taxes. It sounds fantastic. To win two WPTs in one season, it's just crazy. Like, that doesn't happen. To do it working for this tour and doing a segment on it would just be the trifecta. It would just be so perfect. You just have to be zen. You have to be totally calm. You have to see each hand for what it is. I've been focusing a lot lately on just playing one hand at a time and just being real tuned in. This is a really serious final table and you're going to have to earn your chips today. But that's why I'm prepared as the Psycho Ninja to do whatever I have to do, whatever techniques, whatever psychological intimidation is required to take the title down. I'll do it. I'll do it. Oh, you gotta love Kurt Kohlberg, the fourth WPT final table for him. The question is, can he get the job done and take the title tonight, Vince? He's an exciting player. We will see. Action on Abraham Karatki. He's a local, he's a semi-retired real estate developer. He's got King Jack of Diamonds. He's a bit of a controversial character here, Vince, in that he won a ladies tournament a few years ago, entered it, hmm. because they discrimination the didn't down. play. And he won that tournament, so oh, that's interesting. not sure how popular he is with the women around here. 
Well, he's raised to 105. Byron out. Kevin Stallman looks down at the ladies. Pair of queens. Speaking of ladies, three bets at the 275,000. Tony and Ryan out. Good luck, gentlemen. Kurt out. And a quick call by Abraham. Yep, he's going to look at a flop here. So Queens up against King Jack. Let's go. Yeah, flop 854. Abraham checks. Looks like a good flop for two Queens here. So certainly Kevin is going to make a bet. 475,000. Abraham going out, so the rich getting richer. Kevin Stallman taking down that pot to add to his chip lead. Abraham looking a little annoyed by that. And we move on. Action is going to be on Kurt Kohlberg. First to fold. Quick fold by Kurt. Abraham also going out. Byron not going to play. So Kevin Stallman this time with a queen 10. Likes the position. Gets the chips out. Going to raise. And right behind him, Tony Dunst has picked up the weapons of mass destruction. The pair of aces. Well, incredible. Tony won the first hand. He played with two sevens. Now the pot's been raised in front of him, and he picks up two bullets. The dream hand. Let's see how he's going to play him. Well, he's going to raise. 260. Makes it a nice, comfortable 260. On to Ryan, who has a king-queen. And of course, he can't play that at this point. Back on Stallman. Going to give it up. So Tony Dunn's taking down yet another pot. And Vince, he does the raw deal, but he's been the real deal this season on the World Poker Tour, going for his second WPT title tonight. Hey, this is fun, isn't it, boys? It is interesting, it's isn't it? I'm having a great time. Yeah, I bet you are, Kirk. It was the best. <laughs> you say I'm the best. Generally, <clears throat> generally, that's what the ladies say. I bet they do. I, I bet they do. When I take down these pots, lumberjack style, oh. baby. <laughs> extra wood. <laughs> I said lumberjack style, baby. Extra wood. Damn it, Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the table. Abraham. If he's going to raise it up. Makes it 115,000 to go. Coverman and Stallman both go out now. Tony Dunst, let's take a look at his cards. Can he pick up another pair? No. He goes out. Ryan DeAngelo's picked up two kings. Can't be. The wired pairs, and he'll repop, of course, the 300,000. Kurt folds. All in. And an all in by Abraham. I call. Insta call. Wow, it's like he didn't want to call with the two kings, Vince. Oh, boy. So it's ace queen versus two kings. Ryan out in front. There's Abraham's wife, Allegra. Now Abraham on his feet knows he's got to have some help to knock Ryan out of this tournament. Let's see if he can do it. There's Ronan, who's Ryan's girlfriend. And incidentally, she's cashed six times this season on the World Poker Tour events, more than he has. Here comes the flop. It's ace-10, three of hearts. Abraham hits the ace. Come on, baby. He's hit two aces and taken the lead. Oh. Well, he gave the fist pump, and now he realizes his opponent's got the nut flush draw. So far from over. Oh, Ryan's girlfriend, Rona, just can't take it, Vince. Here comes the turn card. It's a seven of diamonds. No luck there for Ryan. Ryan looking for a king or a heart. One card away from elimination here at Brigada. I think it's the seven of hearts. Try not to freak out when you hit. Let's try to figure it out. I think seven of hearts. Trying to stay positive. I'll call a black king. It's safe. Black king spicy. Abraham with the killer instinct wants to knock out Ryan. Will it happen with one more card to come? Uh, Rona in prayer mode right now. Her man needs help on the river to stay alive. All right, let's see the river. Last card coming up. Can Ryan get lucky? King! king. Whoa! Jumping for joy over there. Devastation for Abraham as he mutters to himself. Double up, baby. We're winning this tournament. Wow, what a river card. Ryan D'Angelo has been hugely out of this world. 
lucky. What a card. I love you, Tony. I've seen him no less than seven or eight times pull out miracle pulls with the worst hand in the river. It's just incredible. I Uncle Tom, what did I tell you? We still have six players left. Stay with us. We'll be back with more exciting action from Borgata right after this. Lots of action. Are you looking for a fun, exciting place to play poker online? Then check out pt.com. Enjoy all the poker you want for free. ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. Welcome back to Bergada on the World Poker Tour. We're at our championship right now. Six players have started. Six names. And just before the break, Ryan D'Angelo and Abraham Karatki got tangled in the monster hand of the day. Just incredible drama here at Borgata tonight at this WPT World Championship. All in. I call. Ryan had the kings. He loved his position. He got out flop. Try not to freak out when you hit. But then outdrew his opponent on the river. Wow. That is going to stick it to Abraham. Seat number one. <laughs> Abraham Karatki now at the bottom with 625,000. Chip Peter is still Kevin Stallman. Byron Kyra moved with four million, and Ryan D'Angelo has moved into third after doubling up right there. He's got about three million in chips. All right, back down to the felt we go. Action on Byron Coverman. Quickly folds his hand. Kevin Stallman, the chip leader out, and Tony goes away. And Ryan out as well. So the four young pros in their 20s all out, letting the two businessmen battle it out here. Kurt Kohlberg. Looks like he bought his sweatshirt at Chuck E. Cheese. Chris. <laughs> He's going to raise with the king three of clubs. Well, Abraham looks down at an ace 10. And when you only have 600,000 left and you're up against just a small blind, you're happy to get your chips in with that. This is the battle of the blinds, the battle of the senior citizens. What do you mean, senior citizens? <laughs> <clears throat> what are you talking about, senior citizens? You're throwing Kurt off, Mike. All right. The battle about... of spring chair. You must think he's a teenager wearing that outfit. <laughs> Hell yeah. Nice hand. And it gives it up, so Abraham wins a small pot after losing the big one a minute ago. So guys, last night, I, I want to say a couple of nice things about Tony Dunst. Thank you. Last night, uh, he's generally a great guy. After we had dinner, we went out to a nightclub. Of course, all the ladies flocked to me, and I want you to know, Tony, you were such a great wingman. Thank you for taking down all those phone numbers for me. <laughs> I believe in uh, Gio, I believe in New Jersey, Gio. they're known as grenades that I was trying to prevent. <laughs> I got to tell you, I think Kurt's bluffing there. All right, back to the hands. Abraham and Byron out. Kevin Stallman with a king, queen, and he will raise to 100,000. Tony with a little pair of fives wants no part of that, folds the hand. Ryan out as well. To Kurt Kohlberg, he's got an eight, six of clubs. Yep, he's in the big blind. I'm gonna cost him another 50,000 to call. But look at this, Vince. It looks like he's getting out raisin chips. I mean, he could see a flop for 50,000, but he is gonna three bet it here. He's moved it to 300,000. All in. Now, Kevin Stoppin says, I've had enough of that. I'm going all in. Well, that's, that's the problem. When you raise a chip leader, he just powers you right back and forces you out of the pot. Kurt has to go out. Kicking himself right now, Vince. He could have called and seen a flop. Could be short and sweet, baby. Well, you know, all year long, we have been telling you about players that have won their seats on the World Poker Tour at ClubWPT.com. And this week, once again, it happened from New York. Dave Daggett, he made a sensational run here at Brigada. Now, how about that guy, Vince? He won his seat on ClubWPT.com to win his package to come down to Borgata to play in the WPT World Championship. Finished 22nd in this tournament, cashed out nearly $34,000. You could win an entry into a WPT event just like David. Cash out some big bucks. Check it out today, ClubWPT.com. Back down to the thump we go. Kevin Stallman, well out front with about 6.2 million in chips. The winner tonight taking home over 1.3 million and a coveted WPT World Championship title. That's right, Byron Coverman with about 3.8. Ryan DeAngelo, third chip position with 2.8. Action on the chip leader, Kevin, right now. Quick fold by him now, Tony Dunst. 
We'll play that mess. Ryan with an ace three, also folding. Kurt out as well. Around to Abraham, the local. Well, he's just going to call with an ace three. Byron with just a 7 5 offsuit. Happy to see a flop. And we are going to the flop. Here it comes. It's a king 8 3. Abraham is flop bottom pair, and he's going to bet 115,000. Byron with absolutely nothing. Zip and Pip is going to make this call. He is floating here. No hand and no draw to try to win the pot later. Now he's made an open and straight draw on the turn. Six of hearts. Abraham checks. A great time to float right there. You just don't put your opponent on a king because he didn't raise before the flop. Well, he has an ace. That's even better. And he didn't raise before the flop. Yeah, you're right, but you don't put him on it. And Byron's going to bet 285. With the open and straight draw, and all of a sudden, bottom pair has got to not look too good. Abraham is going to release the hand. Well played by Byron right there. Folks, that gives you a glimpse of why this guy has cashed seven times on the WPT this season more than anybody else. Making plays like that. Here's Michael Bohuja, the season 12 WPT Player of the Year in the audience. Yeah, what a season he had, Vince, no doubt about it. Kevin and Byron have cashed six and seven times this season on the WPT, yet that guy was far and away the WPT Player of the Year. Couple folds onto the next hand. Kurt Kohlberg now with a seven. Lining up for a raise. Yep, 105. Abraham out. Byron out. All in. Only one to beat is Kevin, but he goes all in with a pair of deuces. Well, he does it because Kurt Kohlberg's got less than 900,000 in chips. Kurt has folded the hand. Come on, K-Dog. I'm sorry, Curtis. <laughs> I'm sorry, Curtis. You've been doing the same thing with these hands. This episode of the World Poker Tour is brought to you in part by DraftKings. If you like poker and sports, then you're going to love daily fantasy sports at DraftKings. Go to DraftKings.com, enter promo code WPT, and start playing today. Tony Dunn is the WPT Caribbean champion. The importance of winning WPT Caribbean was just getting the monkey off my back. I didn't really have any major titles, you know, since I got this job. Hi, I'm Tony Dunst, known online as Bond18. I had cashed some events, I had final table one, but nothing really exciting. So I think this helped validate my analysis on the segment. You know, it gave me something to add to the resume, which feels really good. It was a great feeling and a confidence booster. Let's break it down. Well, Tony, certainly the real deal this season, going for a second WPT title tonight. That is good stuff. And Tony Dunst is actually in fourth chip position here tonight. Action on Abraham Karatki. He's going to fold. And now Byron also going out. Kevin Stallman, the chip leader, has a king eight. Won't play that mess. Now, Tony Dunst looks down at ace queen on the button, a premium hand in that spot. He is going to raise it. Just the men raise, though, to 100,000. Into his old roommate, Ryan DeAngelo, who has an ace dine. Well, Ryan is going to three bet him with this hand, makes it 250,000 to go. Knows Tony could be raising with any two cards on the button. Kurt Kohlberg gets out of their way. Now back on Tony. I'm all in. He is going all in. Those are not the words Ryan wanted to hear. I really don't believe you. Tony Dunst is one of my closest friends in poker. I think he plays a little too loose, though. He's been raising a lot of pots, so I don't think he's reeled it in quite enough. Not really playing loose tonight, little do you know. No matter how good friends you are with somebody, Vince, when you're at the final table going for a title, there are no friends. No, you're just going to take the spot to still say 40 pegs. There's a chat in there. Ryan's mumbling to himself. Oh, I'll tell you. Not sure there'll be roommates again in the future here after this pot. Got balls, kiddo. Whatever. All right, you win. He's going to make a good lay down. Tony Dunn's going to take that pot down. Six players remain at the WPT World Championship. To the action, Byron Coverman, the 27 year old. 
Byron, a former soccer superstar in college, played semi-pro soccer, in fact. This time with a nothing hand, folds it. Kevin with an ace four of hearts. And he's going to get aggressive, makes it 100,000 to go. And Tony going out. Ryan out as well. Around the corner to Kurt. He's got ace three of spades. Going to take the play away. All in, he says. Bold play by Kurt Kohlberg here. Abraham not playing. He's yet to win a pot at this final table. No, Kurt has been much is it? just devoured by Kevin Stallman. It cost him about 600000 more. He can well afford to make that call. But just doesn't want to double Kurt up there. So Kurt finally gets on the board. Might have the best. Needed it, baby. The businessman. He's from Massachusetts. Still alive, Psycho Ninja. The Psycho Ninja lives. <laughs> you know what I say, baby. Either step onto the ship, spaceship with me, or just keep looking up into the sky. Keep looking up. Season 12 of the World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com, where VIP members can win their share of 100000 in cash and prizes every month. ClubWPT.com, never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. What's great about the Borgata is everything you need to function during a poker tournament is right here for you. I love the Borgata. The people are outstanding. The facility is first class. They really do make you feel at home. The restaurants are nice. It's all around a great place, a great environment, and an awesome place to play poker. Borgata has been part of my poker career for a long time now. It's cool. It feels good to just have the hotel right here, the poker room right here. There's always great action. Once I get here, I never leave. I try not to miss any of the ones here at Love the Borgata. All the players love it here, and why not? This is a fantastic facility with great poker. Six players battling for this championship. Kevin Salmon came to this final table as the chip leader. He's still the big chip leader. And the Andes are up to 10,000. Blinds are 30 and 60 at this point. Nice. Quick fold by Abraham Karatki. Coverman now with a queen jack of clubs. I'll give you a quarter. Yes. Quarter. And he will raise to 135 to go. Well, over to his good buddy, Kevin Stallman, the chip leader, looks down at two threes. Yep, a little wired pair. And a little raise here, going to 375. Tony out. Well, as we've seen tonight, Vince, between Tony and Ryan, and now Byron and Kevin, there are no friends at the poker table. He has three bet him to 375,000. Everybody's gone out, but Byron is going to take a look at a flop. He makes the call. These are the two chip leaders battling for this hand, and the flop is a queen 4-4. Four, four. Good for Byron. Yeah, these flop queens up. They both check. Go into the turn, and it's a jack of spades. Even better for Byron. Byron with the top two pair now. But he's going to check, and Kevin checks right behind him. Kevin too wise to make bets now. Now an ace comes off. Byron's got to hate that because it looks like his opponent's got ace high. Checking again. Oh, look at this. Instead of checking it down, Kevin is going to bet here to represent aces up. And you see the wince on Byron's face. He knows he should have bet his hand earlier and didn't do it. So the soccer player giving himself a yellow card here. <clears throat> Kevin Stallman building up his chip lead. Well, there you see Royal Flush Girl Ivy. She's standing by the U Blow watch that will go to our champion tonight. All right, back to the action on Byron. He is disgusted he played that last hand poorly. He's going to fold his hand. Kevin also taking a rest. Tony Dunn's not going to play. Over to Ryan. Picks up ace jack of spade on the button. A nice hand to get there. He's going to raise it. Makes it 130,000 to go. Kurt out. And Abraham now with an ace seven. He's on the short stack. All in. And he's going to push all in. Call. Well, a snap call by Ryan, who has his opponent dominated here. Ace jack versus ace seven. Abraham stands up. Knows he's going to have to get lucky to win this pot. On, or he's going to be out of here in sixth place. 
Let's put a jack on the flop. Dude, that happens, right? Here comes the flop. It's a 10 8 4. Ah, well, he's got some back doors. He's got all kinds of back doors. Uh, all kinds of back doors, meaning flush and straight. I guess I don't want a jack now. Well, I guess I'll take a jack. Yeah, jack's decent. A jack's okay. Yeah. Jack's Decent's four. Fine. Nine would be all right. Maybe Ready? not. Here we yeah, go to the turn. Can here. Abraham catch something? No. Three of hearts. That's a great card. It's a good card. That's a great card for Ryan because he knows his opponent, Abraham, must catch a seven on the river. You have any feelings here? Or he'll be walking out of here in sixth place. Red queen. Here we go. Down to the last card. And it's a jack of hearts. Ryan D'Angelo going to take out Abraham Karaki. Well, the local Abraham Karaki, the real estate developer for 30 years, runs out of real estate here tonight in Atlantic City. He's a big time player out in sixth place over to talk to Matt Savage. Abraham, he came in third in chips tonight. What went wrong? Uh, I played with Ryan for the last three days. Ryan should have been eliminated from the tournament at least 15 times. And I've doubled him up. Uh, twice personally, and he's just uh, rivered the hell out of this tournament. So um, it, that's about it. He's going to take home 235,000. He is gone. We are down to five exciting players. Lynn, back to you. Please join us next time for continuing coverage of the WPT World Championship from Borgata. For Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Matt Savage, the Royal Flush Girls, and everyone at the World Poker Tour, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. See you next time on the WPT. I don't understand what this is for. <laughs> <laughs> the World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. In Atlantic City, it's a fight to the finish and the stakes have never been higher. The $5 million WPT World Championship continues tonight on the WPT. Well, the crowd all standing. He is circling the drain. They are going bare knuckles in the center of the ring. He would love to knock this loud mouth out. Oh! Hi everyone, welcome to the World Poker Tour, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. To be named a world champion in any sport is a distinction saved for a select few. And to become the WPT world champion requires courage, heart and determination. All of which have been on display so far at this final table. Right now, joining me tonight are two champions in my book, Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. Gentlemen, what should we be watching for when play starts back up? Well, Lynn, the one thing I look for to continue this final table is youth prevailing for these five players in their 20s. The other guy is 55 years old. He's on the short stack right now. Kevin Stallman came to this final table as our chip leader. He's still the big chip leader, but he hasn't been overly aggressive like you would think. I think he's playing sort of a conservative style, but this is going to be a good final tough to win. But let's not rule out the man with the silliest shirt in poker. That is Kurt Kohlberg. He's hanging around. Yo. He's a short stack. This will be good. Yo! Don't make me come over. This is not silly. This is sexy. <laughs> you ask the Royal Flush girls. You ask them. I think he heard me. We're all so happy. Oh, boy. Well, there you see the chip counts brought to you by Skrill. Out in front, Kevin Stallman with 6.6 .6 million. In second place, Byron Kyberman with 3.8 million. That's what they're playing for. The winner taking home over 1.3 million. And that beautiful you blow watch that you see there. All right. The Andes are 10,000. Blinds are 30 and 60,000. Let's go to the felt. Kevin Stallman. First to act, he's got a 4-5 of hearts. Worked in masonry, used to work on farms, used to milk cows. And right now he's milking these guys. Trying to get some more here, bets 125,000. Tony Dunst going out. And Ryan D'Angelo, former roommate of Tony Dunst. He won't play it. Well, this is Kurt's fourth WPT final table. He's gonna lay down that ace high. Into Byron Coverman from Lima, Ohio, 27 years old. Byron Kyberman is going to make the call out of the big blind. And the flop is at 8-7. Deuce. Byron has an opening straight draw. Kevin with the flush draw and the gut shot straight draw. Byron's checks. Kevin's betting. 150. Byron's going to call. These two guys, good friends, grew up within 45 minutes of each other. Now they're sitting 
in first and second place, fighting it out for the WPT World Championship title. And now it goes check, check. And another four. Well, a dream card for Kevin. He's made three fours. Can only get beat by a pat hand. Byron just not catching here, but oh wow, is he going to take a shot at this? Well, it's the only way he can win this pot, so you can't blame him for betting here. Yeah, 550. If he checks, he's just waving the white flag and said, you just take this money. At least he's taking a stab at it. It's not going to work, though. Because the other man has three fours. Stalman doing a little acting job, looking over like he's all nervous. And well, here come the raisin chips. Feeling pretty secure. And yeah, yeah he's going to raise it <laughs> close to 1.5. Byron knows the jig is up. And he's wincing, but he knew he just took a stab at it by betting on the river. Can't blame him for doing that. But here he goes out, and the rich get richer. Kevin Stallman adding to his chip lead. Guys, I have an announcement to make. What's up? You're all in? No, it's better than that. Next year, I've been asked to join the Royal Flush Girls. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That is prestigious. It's, oh, I'm very proud to announce I'm going to be accepting. My looks are good, <laughs> and my body is chiseled, and I look good in a dress. Oh. <laughs> there go the ratings, Vince. <laughs> Curtis. Well, Curtis, what is this? A couple folds, and Curtis. Is oh. doing some acting work there. No, he's going to fold this. If you just tuned in and saw this guy for the first time, Vince, would you ever think he had a master's degree in international business from MIT? All right. Well, it's been raised by Byron and called by Kevin. And the flop is a queen six deuce queens for Byron. Yeah, he's flopped top pair, and he's getting betting chips out. It's like 160000 Kevin, of course, with just a 10-8. Has nothing, gives it up. So Byron Coverman taking down that pot. Players came from around the world to play in the WPT Championship at Borgata. And right now I'm joined by Cara Scott. Cara, tell us about your experience playing in this event. Uh, well, I've always said that this is probably the toughest field in tournament poker. They play at such a high level that sitting with them is just so much fun. This season, we have seen a lot of women have success on the WPT. What is your opinion about the rise of numbers of women in poker? Yeah, I mean, it's going up every single year. I think it's important having a group of women that you can kind of pal around with, share expenses with, and talk about, like, the ups and downs of the poker world. That, I think, is really important. And it's that's going to bring more women into the game, too. Absolutely. That's such a good point. I really like that. <laughs> well, thank you so much for chatting to us, Cara. Mike and Vince, back to you. Well, in my view, Kara Scott, one of the greatest things to ever happen to the poker world. All right, Kevin Stallman with 7.3 million. We're back to the felt here in Atlantic City. Action on the very entertaining Kurt Kohlberg, the CEO of a management consulting firm, very successful man, good poker player, out. Well, lays down an ace nine there. Byron Kaufman behind him will raise with a king jack to 130. Kevin out, and now our very own Tony Dunst. Tony going for his second WPT title this season. That is impressive. Got ace, eight of clubs. 350. Wow, he's going to three bet it here to 350,000 with the ace eight. Ryan D'Angelo. Tony's old roommate goes out. Byron's going to call, though. Makes the call with the king jack, and here comes the flop. Oh, nice flop for Tony as it comes eight six, deuce rainbow. Tony with top pair, top kicker, reaching for betting chips. And betting 275,000. Byron not hitting on that flop, but not convinced. Well, over a million dollars in chips in the pot, so he puts in 275 more to make the call, and wisely so, as a king comes up on the turn. Oh boy, Byron hitting kings. Now Tony's going to slow down and check. Well, 325,000 to bet by Byron now because he is out in front with Kings. Tony just not believing this guy would call him with just King High, so he makes the call here. We are going to the river. 
And a nine on the river doesn't change anything. Tony's gonna check again. But Byron doesn't put in the value bet. Tony proudly displaying two eights there, thinking they were good. They're not. Byron gonna win the pot with Kings. That's unlucky. Tony moaning about his luck on the turn there. And can't blame him for that. Byron compliment from Ohio. Beats out Tony Dunst. <sighs> very, very unfortunate card. Okay, Doug. So I'm gonna give you some WPT trivia. Wow. Do you know that Vince Van Patten beat John McEnroe in tennis? It was ranked oh, 24th in the world. And Mike Sexton, <laughs> that good looking dude over there, he was like the all state gymnastics champion of Ohio. I call. That's right, Kurt. True story. It's going to cost really? us both, Vince. And he can really rip it up on the dance floor. Yeah, you can dance. For sure. I can bleed it up. Gymnastics. Yeah. Thank you, Kurt. Yeah. Giving us a nice plug there. <laughs> yeah. All right, five handed poker for our WPT World Championship continues. <laughs> Up nine. Action yeah. on Ryan. He's going to fold. Right, yeah. And, then we just have to watch it play. and our new best friend, Kurt Kohlberg, now. Let's take a look at his cards. Well, he's got an ace 10. Rolling. He's also got the short stack of 900,000 in chips, and he's betting it all right here. Kurt moving all in. Into Byron, who has an ace six of clubs. Well, that makes it tough to call when you have ace six. He won't do it. And now Kevin Stallman, the chip leader. Looks down at a little pair of fives. Curtis. Yeah. <laughs> you don't mind moving in with small pairs, but do you really want to call a guy who's moved in in front of you? Uh, I'm all in. Not usually, but he's saying I'm going to do it. Sweat is on. Nope, first card was a deuce. Tony out, so Kurt now in a race situation. Well, Kevin was hoping to be in a race. He's in it. Now he's hoping to win it. He's got big dogs. Those are big dogs. So the former farmer, Kevin Stallman. Well, he worked on a farm, Vince. He just worked there. He's been plowing Kohlberg all night. Will he do it once again with his fives? Here's the flop. It's an ace seven four. That is good for Kurt. He has hit his aces. Well, you never know a looking at him. He remains stoic. He knows it's not over till it's over, as Yogi Berra said. Maybe there's some revenge here, a queen of clubs. Maybe Yogi was a poker player, too, as well as baseball events. We know it's not over till it's over, but it's going to be over for Kevin unless he catches a five on the river here. For this hand, at least, a nine of clubs on the river. Kurt's going to double up. Nice hand, Kurt. And there you go. Don't call off or go all in with fives. <laughs> Kurt Kohlberg going to the rail. Come on. And look at this, stumbling back to the table. Well, quite an unusual character. Taking it down lumberjack style, baby. Extra <laughs> wood. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I've played 100 World Poker Tour main events, and I have not won once. I've been second, I've been fifth, but I haven't won. worked my tail off for many, many years to become a Psycho Ninja. And that's what I'm all about, man. That's why I'm here. I don't care if I have to go to 200. I'm gonna take one of these suckers down one of these days. Taking it down lumberjack style, baby. Extra wood. Season 12 of the World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com, where VIP members can win their share of 100,000 in cash and prizes every month. ClubWPT.com, never lose a dime plan poker, guaranteed. Well, there you see the Royal Flush Girls kicking it at the Murmur Nightclub here at Borgata. Everybody having a great time. It was. Yeah, I was there for about two minutes. <laughs> I, no, I didn't see you down uh, there, though. Bet you can't <laughs> hang with the big dogs anymore. you no. got to wake up and realize that. I, I realize it. Believe me. <laughs> but right now, we have five players battling for a championship. Here we go. Kurt Kohlberg will quickly fold his hand. Now, Byron Coverman with an ace five goes to 135 35. into the chip leader. Kevin Stallman with the Sudi connectors, the 8-7 of diamonds. 
He wants to see a flop. He's in position. Going to make the call. Raw deal going out. And Ryan also going to make the call. Ryan with the 7-6. So here we go. Three-way action. In the flop 10-3-3 with two hearts. No help to anybody. And it's going Kevin check, check to Kevin, and he also third. checks. Three checks. Turn card is an ace. Oh, beautiful card for Byron there. He got them both drawing dead. There you go. Ryan checks. Byron now. He's checking two with his aces. Kevin bets. Well, Kevin is just going to try to bluff at it here. Yeah, he's betting 250. Ryan out of the way. Yeah, it's not going to work. Byron has aces up, and he is going to make the call. Just going to let his buddy bluff his money off here. Then the river card will be another 10. So now two pair. Byron's going to check his aces. Well, Kevin, who's actually playing the board, is going to bet to try to bluff this pot. 650,000 is the bet. You probably know what I have at this point, right? Byron. <laughs> Look at this. Kevin Stallman saying it with confidence. He has nothing. I didn't expect you to do that, that's for sure. I was talking to myself. Aces and times, times. He's going to fold the hand. Oh, you think long, you think wrong. Byron did it there. Yeah. <laughs> Byron. Kevin Stallman out in front with over six million in chips. And there you see a frustrated Tony Dunst sitting on the short stack <laughs> with 810,000. You're frustrated by the size of your stack? Yeah. That's never been my problem, baby. That's never been my problem, baby. Mm. I always have a big Kurt Ooh. having a great time here tonight. Folds the hand. Oh, man. Byron licking his wounds there. And now Kevin Stallman with a king ten of hearts. The blinds are going up to 40 and 80,000. Kevin's just going to call. Just limps in on the button with his hand. Tony's out, and Ryan. Jack. With an ace 10, not going to raise. Surprised neither one of those guys raised in that spot, but here we go. Now flop comes queen 9 7, two clubs. Ryan checks. Now Kevin is now going to bet here. 100,000. With an inside straight draw, but Ryan's going to call him up. And Ryan still has the best hand with ace high, but no longer. The jack of hearts on the turn. The dream card for Kevin gives him the nut straight and the straight Ryan flush draw. Ryan checks. What a great card there for Stallman, and he's going to continue to bet. A nice seductive 275. Well, Ryan has made an open in straight Ryan with that jack of hearts, and he's going to make the call here. Down to the river we go. Just like he's in quicksand ace in this spot. Is an ace of hearts giving Stalman the nuts and giving aces for Ryan. And Ryan's going to check. Kevin okay, Stalman has the best hand possible. Nothing can beat him. But yet, look at this bet, Vance. Over a million. Bombing it, huh? More than what's in the pot. Queen Jack makes sense. Queen Nine makes sense. Friend Rona, she's been in prayer mode all night. And she better pray he gets out here because he's up against the nuts. Oh boy, Ryan in a pickle. Uh, hearts, yeah. Queen five of the hearts. And essentially, all you can beat is a bluff here, Vince. When a guy bets over a million on the river with a possible straight, possible flush out there, uh, one pair just doesn't look that good. Well, Vince, it's the size of the bet that's puzzled him. Nobody has bet over the size of the pot on the river tonight. They go all in before that where they put in more chips, maybe. I call. Call. Wow, well, he's, he's going to call. made the call. I believe the bet size by Kevin is what threw call. Ryan off there. Again. He loses a bundle of chips in that pot. And Rona, his girlfriend, is saying, you got to be kidding me. Why did you call that? Oh, wow. That's oh, devastating for Ryan D'Angelo. Had my hand in the muck like 10 times. I almost started beaking, but I better keep my beak shut. Kevin Stallman, great player, extends the chip lead out to 7-6. Getting closer to winning 1,350,000. That's what the champ gets here tonight. Back down to the felt. It's going to be on Byron.
He's got a suited connector and he's going to raise to 175. Kevin goes out and Tony Dunn says, picked up Kings. All in. Yep, he's on the short stack and he's going all in with it. All in. Ryan out. Kurt not playing. Byron now. 650. Well, with that all on bet, there's about 1.1 million in there. It's going to cost him another 575,000 to make the call, so he's getting over two to one on his money. And he's going to make this call. Byron hoping to be up something against like Ace King or Ace Queen. That's not the case. He needs a lot of help now. Or Tony Dunst, the raw deal will be the real deal in this hand. King Deuce Deuce. <laughs> Might be a little greedy, Tony. Let's yeah. just get greedy and just stone dead it on the six, flop. Six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight is the sweat, yeah. Of clubs. Oh, man. Tony Dunn's out in front with Kings. Ooh. Over just a nine, eight of clubs. Let's take a look at the flop. Bad start. 10, 8, 3. Bad start. All right, we have a three club. Well, Tony wins in a bit because he knows his opponent flopped the pair. Could backdoor a straight or a flush. Kings and threes are cool. Make the right, best hand if an eight or a nine comes up. Turn. Third card is a queen of hearts. Queen that gives Tony, hearts. he's sweat draw now. Jack, so Byron needs an eight, a nine, or a jack to win this pot. Jack, nine, eight. Yeah. Gotta know what I want, need you now. He's got so many outs. <laughs> Tony's still a pretty good favorite going to the last card. All right, let's go to the river. Let's see what happens. It's a 10 of clubs. Ten of His hand nine. will hold up. And a fist pump by Tony as he sits back down after doubling up. Tony Dunch could be the second player in WPT history to win a regular season event huh? and win the WPT World Championship event in the same season. Twan Lee did it. Can Tony Dunch do it too? And I'll tell you something. He needs to do that because he keeps telling people what they're doing wrong. <laughs> He's proving it. he knows something tonight. <laughs> Stay tuned, we're coming back with more action here on the World Poker Tour. Hey everyone, we're here at the WPT World Championship. We've got our club WPT qualifier, Dave Daggett here, and this is pretty exciting. This is it. I've always dreamed of playing in a tournament like this, and thanks to WPT, I'm here. <laughs> My buddies used to kid me all the time about belonging to the club. They don't do that anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> well, Vince, it's just fantastic to see Club WPT members like David Daggett cash out for big money out here on the World Poker Tour. And if you, too, would like to take a shot on the World Poker Tour, come out here and play for the big bucks, go to clubwpt.com and check it out. Yeah, clubwpt.com. Never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. All right, back down to the table we go. Here's the money for these guys. Kevin Stammen well out in front with about 7.1 million in One chips. He's done it. nothing but increase his chip lead since he's gotten to this final table. Back down to the felt, Byron Coverman. First to play, 27-year-old, looks down at a king-queen, likes it. And he's getting out the raising chips. Well, Vince, this is a hand most players would raise in a five-handed poker game. Makes it 175 to go. Kevin Stallman out. But Tony Dunst has an ace 10 here. Tony's played very well so far at this final table. 375. Came in as the short stack. He's still here. He is going to make it 375 to go. But look out behind him. Ace King there for Ryan. And he is going to shove all in. That hand good enough for Ryan to get his money in with. Kurt out. Byron. Goes out back on Tony. So it's another 1.1 to call. Well, over a million for Tony to make this call. His opponent has four bet all his chips. Now normally that means the guy's got a big hand. Can Tony figure it out? You put the guy on jacks or queens or ace king where you're dominated. Close, but it's a fold. I made that mistake on day three. I won't make it again. Good going, Tony. There you go. Ryan D'Angelo will take this pot. His Railbirds loving that move. This is my lovely girlfriend, Brunette Shimani, and I have 190,000 chips. I met the woman of my dreams, and it was at the poker table. 
heard two passions in life are the same as mine, poker and nutrition, so there's never a boring moment. We're making everybody a juice. Juice time. There's no competition between us. There's no like, oh, I'm better than you or this or that. I can beat him. Maybe other people can't, but I know how he thinks, so I think I can beat him. And I know that it's he true. thinks that he knows how I think. We look at each other as a family, basically, and we're trying to win all the money. Naturally, we're attracted to each other. We're both just on the same path in life, and it's really nice to be on that same wavelength as someone else. I got real lucky. I'm in love. Wow, they are like the Romeo and Juliet of poker. <laughs> Juice of money. Well, Vince and poker love only lasts when both are poker players. If they both continue to win, if one wins and one loses, <laughs> trouble oh, in the making. Boy, just never go broke. The love will continue. <laughs> and we have five players here continuing tonight. Right now, Tony Dunst, quick fold by him. And now, here goes Ryan with a king jack of hearts. And he likes his hand, makes it 160 to go. And Kurt going out. Byron out. Back on Stalman, who has a pretty decent A7. Well, Kevin in the big blind, he's going to make the call here and look at a flop. Okay, so we have King Jack versus A7. These guys doing battle once again, and the flop is a Jack 9 5. That gives Jacks to Ryan. Yeah, but Kevin has the nut flush draw, the ace high flush draw, and he is first to act, and he is going to bet 225000 And Ryan with the auto call. Going to the turn. Let's see. Ooh, the fourth diamond comes off, giving Kevin the nuts. Second time he's made the nut flush at this final table. He won a big pot before off of Ryan with it. Will it happen again? Oh, and he bets a mile 275, trying to trap his victim. Yeah, almost 900,000 in the pot. Then he's going to make this call. Vince, that bet lured him in, but his problem is going to be is what happened when the guy bets again on the river, which is going to happen. And the river card is a nine pairs the board. Well, the nut flush is no longer the nuts, as a full house could be out there, but if you have the ace high flush, you're certainly betting here. Kevin is doing just that, 550000 Ryan D'Angelo is a longtime friend of mine. He's a great guy. He's got a huge heart. He's really down with this whole, like, juicing, you know, healthy living, raw, vegan, zen master thing, but he's still kind of, like, emo. So, like, one moment he's trying to be, you know, Buddha, and the next he's, like, snapping at somebody, and there's this great dichotomy there with Ryan. You're the best, Stan Dog. You're the best. So Ryan just digging his own grave here if he pays this off. Just the best ever. Just the best ever, huh? Not worried, I guess, at all. I tell you, if he does, not even one of his health smoothies is going to help him get over this. Well, Vince, if he pays this off, he may be sleeping on the couch tonight. <laughs> his girlfriend saying, come on, baby, make the right decision. I don't know, I feel so owned. Usually when you take this Whoa. long, you're trying to figure out what you can beat. He has made the call. There's the ace high flush. Joey Chong. <laughs> Joey Chong. Joey Chong special. No worries, what can I say? Go directly to the couch, sir. <laughs> to the couch you must go. Good bet, bro. Good value bet at the end by Kevin. Just punishing Ryan right there. Stay tuned. We're coming back with more action here on the World Poker Tour. The WPT World Championship marks the culmination of Season 12 in addition to the conclusion of the WPT Player of the Year race. When it was all said and done, there was no catching frontrunner Mukul Pahuja. And during the last break, Mike Sexton presented Mukul with the WPT Player of the Year trophy.
Every year, a lot of players win WPT titles, but only one outperforms all the others over a course of a season. And that player wins the highest honor we have on the World Poker Tour. I'm now proud to present the season 12 WPT Player of the Year, Michael Pahuja from Coconut Creek, Florida. Michael. Yay! You are one of the most respected players out here on tour, not only because you're an outstanding player, but the way you conduct yourself on and off the table. And it's an honor that you have won this award for season 12. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Mike. Uh, I just wanted to thank my friends and family. This is a big honor. I'm very proud of it, and uh, thank you very much. Vance, would you do the honors? Not bad, huh? Congratulations. Thank you. Once again, let's hear it for the Season 12 WPT Player of the Year, Muckle Pahuja. An amazing performance this season from Muckle Pahuja, WPT Player of the Year. Looks like action is ready to start back up, so let's check the chip counts and get back to the call of the game with Mike and Vince. Well, it's been the Kevin Stallman show all night long so far. There you see he's got 8.6 million in chips. But Vince, what about the revolving door of the bottom guys here? Tony came to this final table on the short stack. Kurt Kohlberg's been on the short stack. And now it's Ryan D'Angelo who's on the short stack. So everybody rotating on the bottom at one time or another so far. All right, Andy's are up to 15,000. Blinds are 50 and 100. A couple quick folds. Tony Dunst. All in. Says all in with a jack nine. A bold play by Tony here. Uh, Ryan right behind him with a king three is on an extreme short stack. I think Tony could only make this play as he up against the two short stacks like he is. Yeah, let's go. Here's one I'm going to call with just a king three off suit. Kurt goes out and Ryan out in front with a king high. What a bold play that was. Yeah, like four to start the hand. Two former roommates, Tony and Ryan, going to battle right here. So Ryan needs the king high to hold up to stay alive in this tournament. King, 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 king! Rooting her man on, and a king does hit on the flop. Ooh, you are in good shape. There you go. Ryan in front. Well, Ronit says all right because she knows Ryan's opponent has to hit two runners in a row to win this pot. Ooh. Well, there's one of them as a nine comes off. It gets so dirty. Tony knows they can win with a jack or a nine now. Could be so nasty. He went from no outs to having a few. Okay. Deuce! All right. Here we go to the river. And it is a ten of hearts. So Tony doesn't suck out. Ryan's going to double up on the short stack. The 28-year-old, born in New York, now living in Vegas, gets to relax a little bit. Ryan is on a raw vegan diet. He juices a lot. It's all about nutrition with him. And right now, he's got a little more energy after winning that pot. He's going to fold. Here goes Kurt Kohlberg. Kurt's gonna move all in now. Byron going out, Kevin out, and Tony Dunst with a king, queen. Well, tough decision for Tony here. It's another 1.2 million for him to call, and he does so. So Kurt Kohlberg, a non-professional, but a great player. A slight favorite at this point, but if things don't turn out, doesn't get lucky with this. Next five cards, he will be out of here in fifth place. Good luck, Kurt. Yeah, this is Kurt's fourth WPT final table. Right, it's Tony's play. third. And here we go with the first three, and it is an ace, diamond. eight, three. Diamond, three diamond, diamond, diamond. I think that's fair. Diamond, diamond, diamond. So Kurt has hit Ooh. aces, but it's a four flush for Tony Dunst. Kurt out in front. Max sweats every time, right? Yeah, right. All right, let's see the turn. Turn card is a jack. Ten. Diamond. Now that gives Tony a straight draw as well as a flush draw. So he can win with a diamond or a 10. Well, Kurt knows it's never easy. And he sure knows it right now. Going to the river, will it be a diamond? No, it's a six of hearts. Kurt Kohlberg. He can breathe again. Gets up with that awful shirt. <laughs> Very happy. Got a double up on his short stack. Ladies. 
You got it, you got it. Well, a lot of exciting action here at Borgata tonight. Stay with us. We'll be back with more right after this. Oh, boy. This episode of the World Poker Tour is brought to you in part by DraftKings. If you like poker and sports, then you're going to love daily fantasy sports at DraftKings. Go to DraftKings.com, enter promo code WPT, and start playing today. It's the season finale. Go Championship. Here we are, rocking it, just like there's no tomorrow. I'm Marvin Rettenmeyer, and I'm a two-time WPT champion. I would say music and poker are my two biggest passions. I used to play a lot of ping pong as well, till I realized it wasn't getting me anywhere with the ladies. I like music because there's there's so much emotion connected to it, so many memories, and <laughs> and the ladies definitely like a guitar player better than a ping pong player, so that worked out. If I had to choose between poker or music, it would be a very, very tough decision, but I guess I would have to take poker just because that's how I make my money. I do consider myself as an artist, and I like to express myself in many different ways, poker being one of them, and music being another one. I'm Marvin Rettmeyer, and music is definitely a part of my DNA. It's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. Five players remain here at Brigada. <laughs> There's the chip counts. Kevin Stallman well out in front with 8.5 million. Byron Coverman in second with 3.3 million. This guy's playing for the most coveted title on the World Poker Tour, the WPT World Championship. Oh. Kurt with a quick fold, and now Byron Coverman with Ace King will raise to 210. Kevin and Tony go out. Go on to Ryan, who has an Ace Queen here. Oh, this could spell trouble for him. All in. Call. All in and called. I thought you were strong this one, but I can't fold. I told myself he was strong too, but I can't fold that. Ryan D'Angelo needs help, or he's going to be our fifth place finisher. Please win this. Thanks, Kevin. Just cold decked right here. Byron in a great place. It's bank time. Let's go. Ryan talking to himself. All right, let's go to the flop. And he's got to get lucky to stay alive. Here come the first three cards. Oh, it's a queen. queen on the flop. He did it. Byron has a straight draw. A jack would give him a straight. King would give him the lead. King ball. All right, let's see the turn. Go into the turn card. Eight of spades. So we have come down to the river. If Ryan can dodge a king or a jack, he is going to double up yet again. And there's Ronit rooting on Ryan. It's a ten of hearts on the river. It's going to work for Ryan. Back in it, baby. Well, yeah, good luck for Ryan. Bad luck for Byron. Tough spot to get outdrawn there. God, I'm such a luck box. You never, you never get up. You never get up. Come on. 120. Having the World Championship at Bergata has been really incredible. They really know how to bring in the top players and give them a VIP experience. The signature room had a perfect ambiance. It was really intimate, it was beautiful. I feel like the players really enjoyed it. Our experience here at Bergata was truly awesome. The WPT World Championship couldn't have found a better home at Bergata. Why just watch the World Poker Tour on TV when you can get in the game for free? Go to clubwpt.com today and see how you can win an entry to a WPT tournament. Clubwpt.com, never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. Welcome back to the WPT World Championship. We have five players left and what hands we are seeing at Brigada. And just before the break, Ryan D'Angelo took down a huge one in the monster hand of the day. It looked like Ryan was on a downswing after donating to Kevin Stallman's chip stack in multiple pots. And it looked like Ryan was also at the end of his rope Colin. when he was dominated by Byron Coverman's ace king. It's big time. Let's go. Fortunately for Ryan, he had a monster suck out, spiking a queen on the flop that keeps his dreams alive to take down this title at $1.3 million. Yeah. I'm such a luck box. 
Kevin Stallman still well out in front with 8.5 million. But for the first time tonight, we've got a new guy in second place. That's Ryan DeAngelo. After sucking out that last pot, moves into second chip position with 2.7 million. To the felt we go. Action on our chip leader, Kevin Stallman, out of Coldwater, Ohio. This time, Kevin looks at a 7-8 of hearts, a nice little suited connector. Well, oh, Kevin, just like a big teddy bear, everybody out on tour loves the guy. Well, he's going to fold that, surprisingly. And now Tony Dunst with a king six. All in? He's going to shove all in. Wow, bold bet by Tony here. Ryan and Kurt go away. I say bold because you're going to get by three players. And Tony does it. So Tony Dunst going to take that one. Well needed, I might add. Tony's starting to get whittled away. But right now, the blinds are up so strong, you gotta play super aggressive. Back to the next hand. Tony folding, but Ryan has the sevens this time. He's built up his chip stack to close to 2.7 million. Yeah, too many chips to move all in right now. He's just gonna make it 200,000. Kurt out, firing out. Back around to Kevin, now he looks down at ace four diamonds. He's going to make the call. Going to give Ryan some action. Ace four, and the flop is a four, eight, eight. And this could spell trouble for Kevin. He's flopped two pair, but they're not the best two pair. Look at this. He's going to take the play away from Ryan and lead out with a bet. Likes to do that kind of play. 275. No raise by Ryan with the sevens. Just calls. Surprised he wouldn't raise there, Vince. Jack of spades on the turn. I say that because Kevin's never going to have an over pair. He'd re raise it before the flop. He's got an eight. Would he lead out and bet? I doubt it. Looks like he has a four. And he's going to bet again. 350,000. Well, Ryan's problem is he's up against the chip leader, so you can't get too cute. If you raise it and the guy moves in on you, what do you do now? So. He's playing a conservative. Don't blame him for that. But now an ace comes on oh, the river. Wow. Kevin has outdrawn him on the river. He's got aces up, and now he checks. You check? Ryan checks behind him, but Ryan is not going to like it when his opponent turns up his cards. No value bet on the end, but Stallman sucking out nicely there. And Ryan saying to himself, why didn't I raise this pot? I allowed this guy to catch that ace on the river. I can't believe it. Run it. Help. Couldn't breathe on the river. <laughs> What a fuller he shoved. Yeah, but in fairness, against the chip leader, it's hard to raise because if he moves back on you, your tournament life's on the line, period. All right, on to the next hand, Kevin, this time. First to act, going to muck a Jack Deuce, Tony Dunst now. With a Jack 10. Tony throwing it away. Ryan, 9 to 5, Dolly Parton goes out. Kurt Kohlberg now. Kurt looks down at an ace eight. All in. Wow, you heard it. Well, you can't blame him for doing that. He's in the small blind up against only the big blind. Oh, but Byron behind him has ace jack. I don't tell you lay this down. Bingo. He makes the call oh. and he has Kurt dominated. Ace jack versus ace eight. Remember the last time Byron had somebody dominated at ace king against ace queen, he lost that pot. Could it possibly happen twice in a row to him? on a flop here. Now, Kurt has a few more chips than Byron, but here's the flop. It's a 9-4-3. No help for Kurt there. Yep, good flop for Byron there. He's still out in front with the ace jack. All right, let's see what so the turn Kurt brings. would not go broke if he should lose this, we but have wouldn't have many chips. Spade. Ace on the turn, so they both have their aces. Byron also has a spade, right, so he's got a flush draw, meaning brings. Kurt right, can only catch a red eight brings. to win this pot. And that's not a red eight. Three of hearts on the river. The crowd going nuts here for Byron Coverman. Byron. From Lima, Ohio, 27 years old, putting the hurt on Kurt. We still have five players left fighting it out for the $1.35 million first place prize. That is right. The very entertaining Kurt Kohlberg is circling the drain at this point, but he's still alive. Back to you, Lynn. Please join us next time for the conclusion of the WPT World Championship here at Borgata. For Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Matt Savage, the Royal Flush Girls, and everyone at the World Poker Tour, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. See you next time on the WPT.
I don't understand what this is for. Here. <laughs> the World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. In Atlantic City, we are set to name the final champion of the season at one of the most prestigious events in poker. The conclusion of the WPT World Championship starts now, tonight on the WPT. Well, the crowd all standing. He is circling the drain. They are going bare knuckles in the center of the ring. He would love to knock this loud mouth out. Oh! Hi everyone and welcome to the WPT, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. Tonight marks the end of the World Poker Tour's 12th season, but the action won't stop until we crown a champion here at Borgata. For more analysis on where we stand, let's turn to WPT's own Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. Now guys, from the play we've seen so far, who appears to have the best shot at becoming a WPT World Champion? Well, Lynn, obviously the guy with the best shot right now is the big chip leader, Kevin Stallman. He came to the final table as chip leader. He's done nothing but increase that since he's gotten here. He's one of the four young guns that are left fighting it out for this title. The older gentleman, Kurt Kohlberg, a limping gazelle right now, doesn't have many chips, but anything can happen. But right now, you got to say, youth will prevail and is prevailing in the WPT World Championship. It certainly is. Tony Dunn's big chance. He's the raw deal. He's the real deal. Can he do it tonight? I don't know. Thanks, guys. Play is starting back up, so let's get back to the action here at Borgata. Well, there you see the Skrill chip count. Kevin Stallman well out in front with 9.5 million. Kirk Kohlberg only has enough for one big blind lift. And he's a 15,000 blinds so are 50 and 100,000 here for the WPT World Championship. Let's go to the felt. A raw deal, Tony Dunst with a quick fold. And now Ryan D'Angelo out of Vegas has an ace jack. All in. And he's going to push all in. Businessman Kurt Kohlberg going out. Ryan went all in. And he's going all in against the two big stacks and the blinds here, too. Calverman out. And now Kevin. 1.6. From Ohio. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, wow, you scared me, bro. <laughs> he won't play. I gave Kurt one of his woodies he's talking about. Uh, Ryan D'Angelo going to pick up that pot. You legitimately got me there for a sec. <laughs> Ryan's hard drop. Yeah, it really did for a second. That's mean, bro. Uh, just shows you Ryan just focused on winning. Nothing else seems to matter. A quick fold to Ryan and now Kurt Kohlberg with a king jack of diamonds. I'll make it two million eight fifty. All in. I'm happy to pick up that hand with his amount of chips. He's pushed all in. Right behind him. Byron Carver, notice he's raising here, Vance. A men raised to eliminate the field. This way he knows if he does lose, he can only lose 150,000. If he wins, he eliminates a player and moves up in prize money. <coughs> so all the chips are in. Kurt Kohlberg, CEO of management right, consulting firms. He's all in. Can he get lucky? He hits a jack right there. Jack of well, clubs. Kurt out in front here with the we two jacks. Die. Great chance for him to double up and stay alive. All right, let's see a turn. And the turn card is turn an eight. Is an eight of club. Kurt has to dodge a six on the river, but yeah. figures to do so. But even then, he'll still be extremely short stacked. Byron wants to hit a six, hit the miracle. All right, let's go let's to the Let's take river. a look. Oh, no! Oh! Wow! Three sixes on the river for Byron. Tough luck for Kurt. He sinks his head. The dream is over. Horrible pain here at Brigada for Kurt Kohlberg. Always entertaining. No He's out in fifth place. Going to take home 286000 A great player. He's over to talk to Matt Savage. Pretty disappointing finish to your night, but, you know, still a great run for you again at the World Poker Tour. How does it feel? Right now, it doesn't feel quite excellent, but when I reflect back on it, it's, uh, I'm sure I'm going to have a great appreciation. It's been a lot of fun. You got all the fame, good looks, and money you'll ever need. Why good looks. I got, I got, I got the whole package, baby. <laughs> good looks, chiseled features, the whole, the whole shoot and mash. <laughs> it's always a lot of fun to have you. 
Thanks Kurt. for having me. I just want to say thanks to my family and friends, uh, the fantastic World Poker Tour, the Borgata. Thanks for everything that you do. Thanks again, Good night. Kurt. Thank you. Well, it's always sad to say goodbye to Kurt Kohlberg for good riddance to that shirt. Congratulations to our fifth place finisher, Kurt Kohlberg. What a great run for him this week. There are many elements that define the World Poker Tour, one of them being the WPT Foundation. And once again, we have partnered with the Tiger Woods Foundation for Tiger's Poker Night, presented by the World Poker Tour. It was such a stellar event and I had a great time there. Take a look. Tiger Woods Foundation Poker Tournament. People have flown in from around the world to play this event. There are a lot of great pros here tonight. Are there any players in particular whose game you admire most? Well, obviously, Daniel's here and Doyle and, you know, Big Mouth over there. Oh, oh, awesome. Who's that, Phil? Uh, yeah, yeah, what do you think? <laughs> choose WPT as a partner for this event? Well, you guys are so aligned with education. You can't be dumb and play poker, you know, <laughs> at a high level. Poker has now become the number one way to raise money for charities, and we all have just a lot of fun. The Tiger Woods Foundation, what they're doing is changing lives every day. My name is Karen Romero. I attend Oxalan College. DePaul University. The University of Southern California. Tell us all about Tiger Woods Foundation and its mission. Our mission is to get first-generation, low-income students into college, and it's a, it's a tough road. Being the first college graduate of my family makes me feel very proud of myself. To enroll at a private university has given me more opportunities, and that ultimately rooted from the Earl Woods Scholarship Program. But your father was a great influence to you. Tell us about the Earl Woods Scholarship Program. Well, it's a way to honor my dad. We, we support him, we give him full rides, plus mentors. We try and, and really help them and encourage them and be there for him. My mentor, Lawrence, is always there, not to talk about school, but to talk about life. To be there to make sure that I'm sane as a human being. Education is extremely important. What he does for kids and gives them opportunities is absolutely fabulous. A master's in public health, bachelor's of arts in human biology and society. Biology and music. The price of tuition is going up so rapidly. Other kids can't afford to go. Coming out here and being part of the solution is always great. To learn more about the Tiger Woods Foundation and WPT's philanthropic efforts, log on to WPTFoundation.org. It looks like action is starting back up, so I'll send it down to Mike and Vince. Well, Vince, we had a great time playing in Tiger's Poker Night. I know you sat right next to the guy. Now tell us, how good does he really play poker? You know what? I'd give him a, like a five <laughs> handicap in poker. Ah, He's pretty good. That's good. And by the way, great cause, raising money for education. That's kids' nope. scholarships, all done by Tiger and his friends. It was a great event. Tony Dunch going out. Ryan out as well. So now the two blinds fighting it out for this pot, but not fighting hard as Byron just limps in in the small blind. And Kevin says, OK, let's have a flop. And he's going to try to disguise him. He flops aces and nines. Byron Coverman. He's flopped top two pair, but Kevin's never going to put him on an ace because he didn't raise before the flop. And if you've got two nines here, you're going to make the call. Kevin and Kevin doing just that. So turn. Byron in great shape to possibly win a nice pot. Now the board pairs fives. Well, that's going to scare Byron a little bit because he knows the guy called him on the flop. He might have had a pair of fives and just made three fives. So he slows down a little bit and... Stallman gonna bet 250. Well, Stallman's betting because he thinks he has the best hand with nines and fives. This is Kevin's third time at the WPT final table, never a champion yet. And there's the call. Going to the river. An eight comes up. Yeah, Byron's gonna check. Check. It's nine. Well, Byron checking again just in case his opponent flopped a pair of fives and made three fives, but that's not the case. Byron's going to win this pot with aces and nines. He's 27 years old from Ohio, his third final table on the World Poker Tour. Incredible young player. Well, he played soccer in college and actually played semi-pro soccer. Had a great passion for it. Ended up giving it up to play poker. All right, the Andy's up to 20,000, blind 60 and 120. Here we go to the next hand, a couple folds around to Tony Dunst. All in. Tony Dunst is going to shove all in with the ace jack. Oh. And Ryan is going to call with the queen 10. Wasn't expecting Tony to have that good hand. 7-15. Good luck, man. Good luck. 
Yeah, Tony looking to become only the second player in WPT history to win an event. Ace or Jack? Ace, Ace, Jack. During the regular season on the WPT and then the WPT World Championship. Come on. Twan Lee, the only player to do it so far. These guys are former roommates on the tour, best of friends. At least if I lose, I lose them to you, right? Yeah, found a real hand. Such a real hand. And we'll see a flop. Let's see what happens after this ace. flop. There's an ace right there for Tony Dunst. A fist pump by Tony. He knows his opponent's got to hit two runners to win this pot. All right, just put like a six out there and we're safe. So he is indeed a big favorite right now. Thrown it, Ryan's girlfriend. Don't two pair, dealer. No two pair. Just crossing her fingers, hoping something will be good here, but not to be as a nine hits the turn. Nice hand, buddy. Thanks. It's over. Tony Dunst is going to double up. He sits back down. All season long, we've been following several talented, entertaining, up-and-coming players. Now it's time to hear their take on what the future holds in this edition of Ones to Watch. We're the ones to watch. Yeah, I'm the guy. If you need something, I got it. We're the ones to watch. Ladies love money too, you know? Sometimes things go your way. I'm kind of the life of the party anywhere I go. <laughs> Well, that's it. That's a wrap. Played my best. Grinded so hard. Showed a lot of heart. And it was a really good season. Played a lot of good tournaments. Uh, gave myself some opportunities to make a run and win one, but might win one next season. I'm very happy with, you know, how I played. You know, I didn't get the finish that I wanted, but I had a great time being part of Once to Watch. Making the final table in the Grand Prix de Paris was the single most amazing and also disheartening experience that I've ever had all within a couple hours. It helped me grow as a poker player to the point where I feel like now I can pretty much handle anything. You're going to lose some hands that are nasty and you're going to win some that are, that are lucky. And if you're a good player, it's going to be more the one way than the other. So but basically saying, you know, when you win, it's like, of course I won. And when you lose, you smile, act like you like it. Poker, probably the best job ever. Big ups, big downs, but it's great. My boss is always evolving. The future's pretty bright. I generally live my life day to day. I haven't met anyone who's been there, but apparently the future exists. So we'll see. Hopefully I'm there with a smile. My next goal is to get a WPT title. I just have to keep practicing and, and keep doing everything one step at a time. I won't stop until when a World Poker Tour event. You'll be seeing me around. I'll get it in the 13th season. It's about your legacy. And I think that my biggest and best moments are ahead of me. The future's so bright for this season's ones to watch. There are so many different types of poker players that were incorporated into this group. I definitely think that you'll be seeing a lot more of all of us in the future. Season 12 of the World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime plan poker, guaranteed. Welcome back to Brigada in Atlantic City. We're at the WPT World Championship. Four players remain. Yeah, and there are four tough young pros in their 20s. The two guys that came to this final table as the chip leaders, Kevin Stallman and Byron Coverman, are still sitting in first and second chip position. Kevin Stallman in first place with 8.7. Byron Coverman in second now with 5.2. Action on the chip leader, Kevin. He goes out. Our very own Tony Dunst also folding. And now Ryan D'Angelo. All in. He's going to push all in with Dolly Parton, 9 to 5. What a bold play by Ryan here. Only has to beat Byron, who has just a queen deuce. Now Vince, I'm in shock. He hasn't mucked his hand yet. He is taking his time. All right. Wow. He's going to make this call. What a call by Byron Kyberman. Vince, he had a read there that's amazing to me. How can you put your money in with this hand? But he did it. Ryan is stunned by this. You should be able to get Queen Deuce out, but he did not. And right now, Ryan in a lot of trouble with just 9-5. Six, seven, eight, buddy. He is the dog at this point. Here comes the flop. It's an A7-6. OK. So the Queen High is in front. Byron looking like the cat that swallowed the canary out in front, Ronit. it. Right now, her man's got to catch a five, an eight, or a nine. And the turn. Here we go to the turn. It's a 10. Game, peeps. So last card coming up. 
poker card of Ryan's life, and it's a king of clubs. So Byron Coverman, the soccer player, gives a red card to Ryan D'Angelo, kicks him out of here in fourth place. Wrap it up for Ryan. Not going to work out. Has to say goodnight. Give him hell. Another body buried under the boardwalk in Atlantic City. That is Ryan D'Angelo. Going to take home 363000 He's over to talk to Matt Savage. Ryan, great run here in the championship. A lot of ups and downs, a lot of all ends. How does it feel? How does it feel? Well, it doesn't feel good to be out, but I mean, super disappointed in my play. I made two really bad calls against Kevin, but. You know, he, uh, he's a good player, man. He uh, got me to make some bad decisions, so, I mean, that's what good players do. I'm the worst, what can I say? You, know, you got a great support team behind you here. Yeah, I'm so glad my family's here. It's a huge, I don't, mean, it's great Don't for forget me. this one here. Yeah. <laughs> Future family. Of course, family. yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, having the support system is key. I mean, I feel the love, and I'm kind of doing it for them on some level, so, yeah, it's really key to have that. A lot of fun to watch. Thanks. All right, we'll see Appreciate you back. It. The Romeo and Juliet of poker. Thank you. We are down to three players at this point. Well, boys, I like your chances. Well, Tony likes their chances because they're well out in front in terms of chip count. Oh, you're bombs. <laughs> you're the bombs. I guess uh, we might have a little magic left. But at this point, I definitely am not going to go out with any frustration. <laughs> if I go out, I'm just like, well, guys, it's been great. You're lax. You know, yeah, I'm lax right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call off your stack at big final tables. Lesson learned. But let's get back to these three. Tony looks down at Ace Deuce. He's on the button, three-handed. He's short stacked. What do you do? All in. You move all in. That's what you do. No fear, Tony. Byron's out. Damn it, Byron. Why didn't you just do it? Kevin with king six, and he's starting to think, wait, Byron did it with queen deuce. Maybe this is what I should do. He's making this call. Tony gets good action. Let's find another ace. Find another ace. So Tony out in front with the ace high. Must win this pot to stay alive. We even got a heart blocker. Wish you would have done it. Byron loving these two battling. Ace on the window would be just fine. Get Tony back in things. Over three million in this pot. Tony, can you get what you want? Here we go with the first three. Well, how it's about a, a king, king in the door? Oh, wow. Well, Tony wincing over that flop. Four ace. Kevin Stammen out flopping. Tony Dunst. Four ace, not of hearts. Well, Tony with the wheel draw. Here we go with the turn. It is another king. Tony must catch a four on the river now. Nothing else will do. He must make the straight to stay alive. It's gonna have to be a four now. Don't do it to me, John. Do it to him, John. Uh, Mess his day up. Just, just ruin his day. Well, if he doesn't make the wheel, he'll take the bicycle out of here in third place. <laughs> Tony, can you pull off the biggest suck out of the season? River card is a seven of clubs. Well, that's going to do it for Tony Dunst, but what a season, Vince. He won one title and then finished third in the WPT World sure. Championship. Have fun, guys. Do we get a break now? Do we get a break? Yeah. Woo! Our very own Tony Dunst proving he's one of the greats. Going to take home 452000 He's over to talk to Matt Savage. Tony, not the perfect result, but 452000 mm -hmm. has to feel good. It feels really good, especially when you were short stacked all tournament, and then you even came into the final table with the short stack. Uh, your expectations aren't that high, so third for 450 feels great right about now. What do you think is going to happen heads up? I mean, it's anybody's game. Both these guys are really good players. Uh, I think Stammen has a little more, and he's really been just cruising. Uh, he seems to be in his own, and I'll pick him. Great run. Thanks, Great run. With Tony Dunst to out in third place, we are very close to naming the Season 12 WPT World Champion. Will it be Kevin Starman or Byron Carverman who takes the title? We'll be right back with Heads Up Action from Borgata on the World Poker Tour. It's about as good as you're going to feel getting third place. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Awesome. I used to watch.
watched the World Poker Tour on TV when I, I was in high school, and I thought it was like the coolest thing. And now I'm like, wow, I just won a million dollars. Like that, that's insane. Anytime you win a tournament, it just feels so good on the inside. You're just so thrilled that you were the guy who always had the best hand. I feel like it was a dream. Literally woke up thinking that I had dreamt that, and then I realized Oh my god, I actually won a World Poker Tour and I'm a champion for life. I think all serious poker players uh, want to achieve this. It's, it's the ultimate goal and it's the ultimate achievement to have your name on the trophy. That's unbelievable. And it's heavy. What a season we had. Season 12 on the World Poker Tour. Oh, you are right about that, Vince. The World Poker Tour has traveled around the globe, and we would like to congratulate all the WPT champions. All right, but before we take on the next season, Mike, we still have one more champion to crown. So as is the custom on the World Poker Tour, when we get down to heads up play, we have our money presentation. So show us the money. We are heads up between Byron Carverman and Kevin Starman. Both of these players are ready to finish the battle to become the next WPT World Champion. Right now, the Royal Flush Girls are bringing out the money, plus the Monster 24K headphones and the beautiful U-Glow watch to be awarded to our champion. So whose name will be the last one added to the WPT Champions Cup this season? We'll soon find out. Heads Up Play is about to start, so let's get back to the call of the game with Mike and Vince. As we start this heads-up battle, Kevin Stallman with about a two-to-one chip lead over Byron Kyberman, 10.7 million to 5.6 million. Vince, these two guys came to the final table in first and second chip position, and they're the ones fighting it out for the title. All right, action on Stallman from Ohio. He's got an ace six this time, gonna try to disguise his hand. Just calls. Byron Kyberman also from Ohio. 420. 420. There he goes, 420 to go. I can call it 420. I bet you can, big boy. <laughs> He's going to make that call. And we're going to see the flop. Oh, a nice flop there for Kevin. He's got top pair with top kicker. Byron with nothing. He's going to make the continuation bet, though. 375. Well, you would think with the ace of spade, Kevin might raise here with the top pair, top kicker, back door, nut flush draw, but just calls again. Yeah, we're gonna go to the turn. 10 comes off, giving Byron Kyberman the lead with two 10s now. Well, Byron bluffing just a second ago, now trying to get some value out of this hand and gets quickly called by Kevin. Down to the river we go. The board pairs threes, so again, a value bet coming up here by Byron. Three point three million in the pot. He's going to bet nine hundred and twenty-five thousand. A quick call by Kevin, but he is not going to like it as his opponent shows him tens up to take down this pot. Uh, it's uh, nine twenty-five. Should be nine twenty-five. Our winner is Byron with ten and three. Well, with that pot, Byron takes the chip lead in his heads-up battle and bents. Byron's not only a great poker player, but he's quite the soccer player as well. That's right, and his mother was kind enough to send in some footage of him from high school. Let's take a look. All right, to the high school game and the boys' district finals over at Wapak. Early second half, Kyberman outruns the entire Bluffton defense. Shot on goal off the goalie's hand, ping pong off the post, into the back of the net, and the Musketeers win 7-0 to take the district championship. Uh, I'm very passionate about soccer. I always have been. Been playing pretty much nonstop since I was 10, traveling two hours each way to practice, you know, sometimes two or three times a week. When I lose a soccer game, I'm, you know, not happy. It's like, very competitive. And in poker, I can't say the same because in poker, you can't control it. So that's going to do it. Byron Kaverman, who came to this final table as the chip leader, out in fourth place. So I just try to play my best and then not let the outcomes of winning or losing affect me. 
Well, that's a great attitude to have, especially if you're a tournament poker player. <laughs> and right now, he's the chip leader at the WPT World Championship. But he definitely has the competitive spirit, being a great athlete like he is. That's a nice transition to play professional poker. He has proven it here tonight. Now he has a pair of deuces, and he will raise to 255. Well, the question is whether Kevin will re-raise or not. Pretty big hand playing heads up, but he's just going to call. Going to see a flop first. Byron with deuces. King, queen for Kevin. Here we go. Now flop jack, 6-4. Two spades. Kevin leading right out into the pre-flop razor. 425,000. He likes to do that. Take the play away from the razor. And what a call by Byron here with just two deuces. And the turn card is a queen. Kevin has hit queens. Well, Kevin has made the top pair now. Three spades on the board. He was bluffing. Now he's betting for real. And a huge bet it is. 1.1 million. Can't take that heat. Kaverman has to give it up. Kevin Stallman looking good. Well, just that quick. He's regained the chip lead. This episode of the World Poker Tour is brought to you in part by DraftKings. If you like poker and sports, then you're gonna love daily fantasy sports at DraftKings. Go to DraftKings.com, enter promo code WPT, and start playing today. Where I grew up in Coldwater, Ohio, is a really small town. Everyone knows everyone. Everyone knows everyone's business. Lots of farmland. I would go milk cows and make ten dollars an hour. So I started getting money. Started playing in the bars, trying to learn poker, playing with a bunch of buddies. A lot of action. A lot of action. I had a successful night in poker. I quit my job. From Coldwater, Ohio, Kevin Stallman. I've been doing it ever since. What a story. And I'll tell you, I'd rather milk players than milk cows for 10 bucks an hour. That's for sure. Well, I don't blame you, Vance, but we just got word. Well, Kevin's family just arrived, and they're hiding backstage. I'm Kevin Stallman's brother. We drove 11 hours to get here, decided to come here last night, the night before. And this is his girlfriend, Hannah. But he has no idea that we are here right now. It's a secret. <laughs> All right, your secret is safe with us. But Vince, who drives 11 hours to see somebody unless they're in for a piece of the pie? That's what I want to know. <laughs> That's the farm gang for you. <laughs> and they're backstage. Kevin, former cow milker, out in front with 9.4 million here. These two guys came to the final table as chip leaders. They grew up 45 minutes apart. They're good friends. Here they are fighting it out for the most coveted title on the World Poker Tour. Well, Kevin doesn't raise, just calls Byron in. And the flop is a 3-3-8, three, three, three of a kind for Kevin Stallman. Byron's going to check. What a flop for Kevin, and he leads right out after his opponent checked the flop. That's 150. Byron calls the 150. Byron calls him with just king high. Must hit king king to win this pot. Now the board pairs eights. Byron checking. Kevin checking. Deuce on the river. Kevin with threes full. Byron with nothing. Well, he is going to take a stab at this with a bluff, 325. Well, Kevin's got a full house, so he'll be going nowhere. I think he'd raise in this spot, which he's doing. Yep, an additional close to one million. Yeah, it's a healthy raise, Vince. More than what's in the pot by far. So that could raise the antenna and suspicion of Byron. Why is he making such a big raise? Well, Byron's got to give that up. So it's a three. I had a three. No. I showed it. You did? No. And Mike, it's hard to believe that another season is coming to an end. But you know, I know one place where the season never stops. Constant action, and that is on clubwpt.com. Well, you said it, Vince. There's always a fun game to find on clubwpt.com. No matter what time of the day, you get to play all the poker you want. You can win your share of cash and prizes, and you could even win entries into live events out here on the World Poker Tour. No, it's pretty incredible. You take a shot at the big time, and you at home can do that. Visit us out here on the World Poker Tour, clubwpt.com. Never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. Okay. About to start up, let's go back down to the table. Do we need cocktails? Get a beer? <laughs> I can't breathe. I, I can't even get some drinks for our friends, too, okay? 
Send a bottle over there. And the antis are going up to 25,000. Blinds are 75, 150, Mike. And it is cocktail time for the two gentlemen going after this championship. Well, why not? They're both taking home huge paydays wherever they finish. I call you Byron. How much? What a week it's been for both of these guys, but one of them is going to take home a WPT title. Well, Byron has raised with an 8-7 of clubs, been called by Kevin with ace-4, and the flop is a jack-6-4. Well, Kevin's got bottom pair and checks. Byron, with the gut shot straight draw, is going to bet. Continuation bet, 275. And Kevin with the fours. Yep, he makes the call. Kevin calls. Here we go to the turn. A deuce comes off. Not going to change much. Action's on Kevin this time. Whoa, he's going to lead out and bet. He's betting 525000 here. And Byron's trying to figure that out. He said, look, I raised before the flop. I bet on the flop. This guy did nothing. Now all of a sudden he's going to lead out when a deuce comes off? I don't think so. I'm going to raise it. $1.25 million. Cool. Wow, what a call by Kevin here. Let me tell you something. When this pot gets raised on the turn, it is hard to put your money in there with two fours. River, river card, another four. Well, a dream card on the river right there for Kevin. Let's see how he plays it. Oh, he's going to try to trap here. He checks. Well, he played it smart. Only way Byron can win this pot is to try to bluff at it, but that's not going to work. Good check. Check, check. Byron waves a white flag. Good for him. Saved his money there. Did I have you? Look at that, Byron not falling into the trap. Doesn't look like I did. Kevin takes down and there's Kevin's family. So excited to see him take down that pot. There are 100,000 reasons to love ClubWPT.com because as a Club WPT VIP, you get the chance to win a share of $100,000 in cash and prizes every month. ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. We're here in the kitchen of the Old Homestead Steakhouse in Brigada, where Chef Romeo is going to teach us how to make the perfect steak. All right, girls, we got five items for this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to salt the steak. Come on, more, more. <laughs> this is grapeseed oil. I'm going to pour this in here. Now, if you want to grab me one clove of garlic, just throw it in there. We're gonna, we're gonna infuse that grapeseed oil with the garlic so you get that taste in the steak. We're gonna leave this for about two, two minutes on one side. We're gonna go to the next side for another two. So you should get that nice restaurant crust on there. Go ahead, you can flip it over. Ah, oh, you got it. Nice. Ooh. Then before we're done, we're gonna add that sprig of rosemary in here. And put it in the oil? Yeah. Okay. Oh, the whole thing. Oh, yeah. let it go. I wish you guys can smell it. You know, this. here at the Homestead, it's a four basic food group. Beef, 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 and beef. Oh, all right. Let's get it on. Well, Vince, we've eaten in that steakhouse many times. It really is good. Well, we are into deep stretch here at Brigada. Two guys from Ohio, two young superstar poker players going at it. And right now, action on Byron. He's going to raise with a jack eight. Kevin, the chip leader with 12 million. Calls. Well, quickly calls with a 10 eight. Flop. Queen nine seven. Kevin with the open end straight draw. He is going to lead out and bet 525,000. Byron with the gut shot straight draw, trying to figure out what to do. Byron taking his time here. Big decision for him. Well, he's a methodical player, meaning he takes his time. Remember, he's on the short stack here, and yet here he is raising to 1.15 million with just a gut shot straight draw. I just wonder if he'd just ship it here to try to bust the guy if he could make this straight, but no, just makes the call. Going to the turn, who will get lucky? It's an ace of hearts. Well, this gives both players a flush draw to go along with their straight draw. Byron with the bigger flush draw. He's going to put him to the test, putting him all in. Wow. Jesus. 
And what a quagmire Byron is in right now. I don't see how you can play this hand if you're Byron. It's for all your money. Now, we can see he's got the best hand with jack high and the best flush draw, but if you're sitting in this seat, there's no way you can really believe this is the best hand. It's just one messed up hand. Whether I call it off and look a complete idiot or pretty smart. I was going to bluff that card. He's a zombie. A10 with the heart. That makes sense. Mike, he just muttered A10. He put him on the hand. Unbelievable. Well, can he put all his chips in the pot? That's the question. Can you follow through? Byron Coverman with the instincts, but oh, no! Oh, boy, if he'd have made that call, Vance, after calling the 10-8 with a heart... Can't do it. It would have been incredible. The family of Kevin rejoicing. Byron. Find it. Find it, please. Yeah, find it. Find it. Find it. And we are going to take heart. a look. Yeah, it looks like a king. Was it the ton of hearts? Meaning the jack I would have won that pot. So you had it? Is that what you're saying? I had two kids. I had two kids. You Byron, you were so close. You could have won it there, mate. Welcome back to Brigada and the WPT World Championship. Heads up action continues. And Mike, every decision is critical as we see in the monster hand of the day. Kevin Stallman just showed monster heart, making an all-in bet with just a draw. Jesus. Little did Byron know he was in the lead with just a draw of his own, or maybe he did. A-10 with the heart. That makes sense. Ultimately, Byron laid it down. And Vince, what impresses me the most in these two guys is their monster ability to put each other on a hand. Byron. And right now, we're getting word that Tony Dunn stopped back by to offer some more thoughts on this hand in the Raw Deal. You know, when I was standing at the cage and collecting my payout, I was getting concerned that I wouldn't make it to the command center in time to discuss tonight's heads-up battle. Fortunately, this match features one of the slowest acting players I've encountered on the tour, Byron Coverman. But Byron is having an incredible season on the WPT, which begs the question, is all that extra thinking leading him to better decisions, or is he just wasting everyone's time? Let's break it down. It's no shock that this final table ended in a match between Byron and Kevin. The two of them had the most chips coming into the final table, and both managed to maintain and build their stacks while the rest of us dropped out. Good luck, guys. Now Kevin is gradually building his lead over Byron. Any idea how many you have? who's below 30 blinds entering a hand that sees him opening the button for a min raise with jack eight. Kevin makes the call with 10 eight, and both players flop a draw on seven nine queen with two hearts. Kevin fires out 80% pot here into Byron. I'm a little surprised to see Byron raising this flop since Kevin usually leads with decent equity and might shove many of his hands over the raise. But here he just calls with his straight draw and when the turn ace of hearts adds to his outs, Kevin open jams for the rest of Byron's stack. Owen. And to the surprise of no one, Byron goes into the tank. This one messed up hand. Of course, this is a very awkward situation that's absolutely worth thinking over. He's a zombie. But the big problem for Byron is that he doesn't even beat many of Kevin's draws. He'll lose to Jack-10 if the river is a blank. And if Kevin has the queen or king of hearts, Byron is practically drawing dead. Eventually, these issues become clear to Byron because he releases his hand and loses nearly half his stack in the process. Byron. And I actually like his fold, even though this time he had the best hand and would have won a big pot. You could have won it there, mate. So getting back to our original question, do I think Byron thinking things over is leading him to better decisions? Yes. But do I think this was a reasonable amount of time to spend on this decision? <laughs> no! Take it easy, Tony. Don't scream. 
We know oh. you're out, but you got 452,000. You should be happy. Well, now the blinds are going up to one and 200. I have no way. I know I have Just give me a water. Kevin Stallman, 13.3 million. Byron Coverman, 3.1. Kevin with an ace eight. And then it just limps in on the button with ace high. I'm surprised at that. Byron's got a pair of fours. All in. And he's going to push all in. Oh. And a quick call, of course. I beat that. Wow. Burgers? No, you got burgers? Not by much. Not by much. You're like, wow. <laughs> I thought you had burgers. I don't know. I don't know what burgers is, but I don't. Kevin wins this pot. He'll be the season 12 WPT world champion. It all comes down to this, mate. And we're going to see a flop. The WPT championship at stake right now. Here's the flop. It's a queen, 9-6. So far, so good for Byron in terms of doubling up here. Kevin needs an ace or an eight to take the lead. He could backdoor straight as well. Uh, you know, he's got, he's got a million backdoors. There's Kevin's family just trying to figure it all out. Can he get lucky? No, not there. Three of hearts. Oh, Kevin needs to catch an ace or an eight on the river to win this pot and become champion. Yeah. Love to bury this one. He's on a long shot draw. Byron well out in front. Will he double up with his hand? Or can Kevin get lucky? Here we go with the turn. It's an ace! That's it! Well, that's going to do it. And the ace on the river wins it for Kevin Stallman. He is a season 12 WPT world champion. These guys came with That's the way to win the WPT championship at the end of the season. Love you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Wow. Thanks. Thanks. That's incredible. That's so funny. Byron Coverman, our runner up, down to talk to Matt Savage. Let's go down and see what he has to say. Byron, great run. Does it make it any easier to lose to a friend like Kevin? Oh, man, it does. Yeah, I like Kevin a lot, and we've been friends for a while, so, you know, it's nice to see him win. Get on the trophy. Three quarters of a million dollars. A great way to end the season. Thanks a lot, and congratulations. Mike, over to you. Kevin, congratulations. You are the pride of Coldwater, Ohio tonight, that's for sure. What a show you put on. Tell us how you're feeling right now. Feeling like a million bucks. <laughs> like a million bucks. <laughs> it's 1.35 million, Kevin. Woo. And along with your money, you get your name engraved on the WPT Champions Cup. We have the 24K Monster Headphones. We also have a titanium. Wow. You blow watch. Wow. Once again, let's hear it for the champion of the WPT World Championship for Season 12, Kevin Stallman. Woo! Lynn, back to you. Back to you. What a fantastic season it has been. And from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you all so much for watching. And from Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, Matt Savage, the Royal Flush Girls, and everyone at the World Poker Tour, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. See you next season on the WPT. I don't understand what this is for. <laughs> the World Poker Tour is sponsored by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. Welcome back to the Bicycle Casino. Feeling like a million bucks. I have to put up my hard-earned money, my cash here, to try to become a legend. The city of Los Angeles plays host to the Legends of Poker. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lynn Gilmartin, and welcome to the season premiere of the World Poker Tour. Well, it's that time of year again as players have made the trek back to Southern California for some fun out of the sun and another chance to become the newest WPT champion. While the sun shined brightly on another gorgeous Los Angeles afternoon, inside the Bicycle Casino, the spotlight was focused on the four former Legends of Poker champions. This is where it all begins. This is the most exciting stop on the tour, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, especially since uh, we've all been successful well, in Legends this Legends are born. <laughs> it's my favorite stop. They all hoped to be the first champion to win the same event twice. Before that could happen, Poker Hall of Famer Mike Sexton had some business to take care of. So to kick off season 13, Let's shuffle up and deal. With the new season officially underway, many familiar faces arrived, 
including Bluff Ones to Watch and Garrett Greer. I haven't played a live event in like about a month and a half. It feels good to be here again, you know? It feels good to see all the faces, and it feels good to be playing live poker again. This $3,700 tournament would feature three starting days and a new twist. Players would be able to buy in on day two for $10,000. Here we go. Hoping to make it through on just one bullet, Season 11 Player of the Year Matt Salzberg found himself on the short stack. But after doubling up wow. and a failed high five, wow. he began to gain some momentum to become one of the chip leaders. Well, Benny, we shocked the world. We both made it to dinner break for day one. I mean, uh, they're all stunned. After the break, Vince put his tournament on the line, going all in against two-time WPT runner-up Dylan Wilkerson. The bet gave Dylan pause, but he eventually called and ended Vince's run. Nothing you could do, you know, get that late at night. Now I drive home. When play concluded for the day, it was Randy Bowie who sat on the top of the chip counts, just edging out local favourite Mike Escandari, earning Randy a pair of monster headphones awarded to the chip leader. Wonderful. Played great at the end. They gave me the chip at the end. Day 1B kicked off with a new crop of players ready to take a shot at the title, including four-time WPT finalist Kurt Kohlberg, who was getting a little ahead of himself. I won. Whew. It was a grueling week. Somebody had to fight off all the would-be contenders. And now, it's just about ladies. Some returning players, like Season 12 LAPC champion Chris Mormon, who, after busting at the end of the previous day, was off to a better start. Two more bluff ones to watch made their season 13 debut. LA local poker pro Daniel Strelitz and from Northern California, entrepreneur Candace Collins. Poker is a new chapter for me. That's just my number one priority right now. I don't know why I'm so competitive. I just, I haven't reached my goal of, you know, making a final table yet. And after making his WPT debut, three-time Super Bowl champion Richard Seymour was eliminated after his flopped flush lost to the nut flush on the river. I'll make them out tomorrow. <laughs> of the 178 players who entered day 1B, 76 would survive and return on day 2. Reigning champ Jordan Christos bagged a big stack, but it was Nick Grippo who finished as the chip leader and was awarded some monster sound to go along with his monster stack. I heard they're fantastic. I'll be wearing them on Tuesday, probably. As the final day one got underway at the Bicycle Casino, hope was in the air. Third time is going to be a charm. Season 12 WPT world champion Kevin Starman had finally arrived yep. and was looking to score back-to-back -back titles, plus a bit more. It's the only way to become the POI leader, right? Players who had the unfortunate distinction of busting out would be able to buy in directly to day two for a premium of $10,000 and receive a 60 big blind stack. Season 12 wants to watch Christina Lindley shared her thoughts on this new quantum reload format. I think it's great. Why not beef up the prize pool? That makes the field a lot softer for me if all the really good regs are buying in for 10K and want to pay more than I did. Looking to improve on his breakout season 12 performance, Sean Seller folded pocket jacks in a pot with French businessman Philippe Ruas and season 12 Legends of Poker third place finisher Ryan Goendu. Sean felt good about his decision when Ryan and Philippe turned over their hands. A jack on the flop would have given Sean a set, but he avoided catastrophe as running aces gave Ryan quads wow. and knocked out Philippe. Wow. <laughs> Ooh, dodged a big one there, holy cow. At the end of the day, San Diego Poker Pro Tyler Cornell, who had finished 11th in this event in Season 9 and Season 10, was poised to make another deep run after amassing a monster stack of over 258,000. Day 1 C trip leader, got some headphones, made a lot of sets, all my gloves got through. Good day. Before cards were in the air, there was action outside the tournament room as players stepped up to the cage and paid $10,000 for entry into day two. A little, uh, quantum reloading here. You're to gamble, right? It's a casino, so what the heck? 27 players took advantage of the new feature, including WPT champions Lane Flack, Kevin Starman, and Phil Locke. These interviews are only embarrassing when you put her out later, you know? Like, if I'm out in two orbits, there's definitely going to be a link between this segment and that. He made it two orbits. Phil lasted about two orbits. 
With registration closed, the tournament staff released the prize pool information. The kickoff event of season 13 attracted 593 entries, creating a prize pool of over $2.1 million. 54 players will make the money, with first place winning just over $576,000. The toughest table in the room featured bluff ones to watch Garrett Greer, our own Mike Sexton, Season 10 Legends champion Will Fiella, and WSOP main event winner Ryan Reese. Table change! <laughs> I think I could have had a better table job, but I'm gonna go for Ryan's to share something. It should be fun, but I uh, wish I could have been on the softer table. Garrett may have been eyeing Ryan's stack, but it was Mike Sexton he had to worry about. Holding pocket kings, Garrett went all in on the queen high flop but was quickly called by Mike, who had flopped a set of fives. No help on the turn, and River knocked Garrett out of the tournament. It didn't get any easier at this stacked table when Season 9 Legends champion Andy Frankenberger took Garrett's seat. Ryan's got the chips, Will the personality, Mike the legend. And you got the score. There you go. As play continued throughout the room, the bust-outs piled up, but so did the chip stacks of two-time WPT finalist Jeremy Kotler and playing in his first WPT tournament, local player Harry Aratunian. So far, so good, but uh, we're still early, you know? There's so much time. Anything could happen. In a big pot featuring three WPT champions, David Chu folded, leaving the reigning Legends of Poker champion Jordan Christos all in against the reigning WPT world champion Kevin Starman. Jordan's pocket tens were ahead of Kevin's ace-queen offsuit, but an ace on the flop gave Kevin the lead. No help on the turn or the river ended Jordan's chance to go back to back. No repeat. Mm. Makes me want to cry. By the end of the day, 183 would see their dream of winning this year's Legends of Poker event disappear. But 67 players survived, at least for another day. At the top of the chip counts sat Chris Talone, who amassed a monster stack of over 1 million chips. Tyler Cornell finished third on the leaderboard and was the only day one chip leader to survive the day. The remaining players would return to battle with the money bubble looming on the horizon. Day three got underway with 13 eliminations standing in the way of players making it to the money. I'm in for 14,000, so I'm trying to be in for a little bit less. So I think cash would be perfect. A lot of people are really deep, and the structure is amazing, so it may take longer than expected. I'm guessing like an hour and a half. Ryan's prediction looked spot on as the bust outs began. Jeremy Kotler emerged as the early chip leader, increasing his stack to over 1.5 million after eliminating season seven Legends of Poker runner-up Amit Makija just short of cashing. On the money bubble, Ali Islami went all in, except for a $1,000 chip he was using as a card protector. Kevin Starman made the call. The flop came ace, ace, four, giving Kevin a monster hand with aces full. Check. That's a decent flop for me. Check. 1K. <laughs> uh, just in case the other card matched the first card to make it a pair, I still have a card. Right? So Put off the card, please. That was terrible. Yeah. Terrible call. For that reason, you okay? After some deliberation, Ali made the call and saw that he was drawing dead. I'm not really playing to cash. I'm not trying to just barely make money. I'm trying to make a WPT final table. That's what's important to me. With Ali out in 55th place, the remaining players were in the money. Mike. Mike. One of the first players to hit the payout line was WPT champion David Williams. Williams was knocked out at the hands of Tyler Kenny, who was going for the silent assassin look. Good luck, guys. The field began to thin out, and among the players hitting the rail were WPT champion Lee Markholt, main event winner Ryan Reese, day two chip leader Chris Talone, and bluff ones to watch Daniel Strelitz. After hitting a king on the flop, Jeremy Kotler extended his chip lead by knocking out season 11 player of the year, Matt Salzberg and his pocket queens in 27th place. Jeremy looked poised to end the day with the chip lead, but at the end of the night, he lost a pot and the lead to Tyler Kenny. My friend, uh, I left with Tyler as the chip lead now, but uh, it was a great day. Season nine legends champ Andy Frankenberger also had a strong day, finishing in sixth place with over 1.3 million. 
quite a comeback from his slow start. When I finished my third day one with 17,000 chips, I wasn't feeling like I'd be here today with 15 left, 16 left. It was a battle. All day, for sure, it was a battle. 16 players remain, including two WPT champions. Find out who will make the final six when we return to the Bicycle Casino on the World Poker Tour. Have you ever dreamed of playing in a televised World Poker Tour event? Club WPT.com awards more than a dozen packages to travel, stay, and play in a WPT main tour event. On Club WPT.com, you can play online today and play on TV tomorrow. We are back in Los Angeles with continuing coverage of the Legends of Poker Playdown. Season 12 WPT World Champion Kevin Starman is hoping to score back-to-back -back titles. But 15 players stood in his way as day four began. As the remaining players settled in and unbagged their chips, Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten stopped by to check out the action. This is the man that got me. This is the one. Yeah, I clipped you. That was pretty That was pretty. I'm very bad. happy to see you took care of my chips, though, Andy. That's I, very, very I've been nice. looking after them, OK? I see you have. <laughs> yes, hello. Yeah, I'm in here. Oh, beautiful. I'm in here. Oh, great. <laughs> yes. Oh, you didn't make many mistakes okay. at the championship. We looked at you close. You played really well. Kevin, congratulations. What a show you put on. Tell us how you're feeling right now. Feeling like a million bucks. <laughs> like yeah. Yeah. Right, good luck today. I hey, appreciate it, man. Coming into the day 13th in chips, Kevin had some ground to make up. And he quickly did, nearly doubling up while knocking out Joe Segedy in 15th place. Two-time season 12 WPT finalist Dylan Wilkerson was next to hit the rail in 14th place. After losing a huge pot to Jeremy Kotler, local player Mike Eskinderi was down to his last nine big blinds and looking for help. Mike, a regular at the Bicycle Casino, had assembled a vocal rail who had adopted a chant of CBK, or Comeback Kid, to cheer their friend on. The positivity seemed to be working. No five. CBK! After doubling through Seattle poker pro Taylor McFarland, Mike found himself all in on the flop against Kevin Starman. Kevin called and was in the lead with top two pair against the bottom two pair of Mike. But a club on the turn and the river gave Mike a flush and continued his comeback. CBK! 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 Well, Mike, Mike! Mike, go all night with Mike for tomorrow final table. They love me, I love them, and I'm gonna do it for myself and them. And they don't call me CBK for nothing. I always make a comeback. Kevin Starman's hopes of winning back-to-back -back titles now looked dim as he was down to his last 100,000. But the Ohio native began a comeback of his own. When the final 10 players combined to one table, Kevin had fought his way back to over 1.3 million in chips. Next to bust out was Season 9 Legends champ Andy Frankenberger, whose pocket kings were cracked by the ace king of Tyler Cornell. Andy's run to win his second Legends of Poker title was over. At least there's no regrets, there's no second guessing, there's just disappointment. It's part of being a tournament pro. After doubling through Jeremy Kotler, the comeback kid, Mike Eskinderi, took over the chip lead. I told these guys, this is our house. Nobody's from outside is going to take this son. It's ours, and it's going to stay that way. Down to eight players, Kevin Starman was poised to double up with Trip Queens against Tyler Cornell, who held ace king of clubs. But once again, running clubs gave his opponent a flush and knocked the WPT world champion out just short of the televised final table. Play as good as I could. Got unlucky a couple times. Can't complain. The final seven players battled for over two hours until Taylor McFarland knocked out Canadian Owen Crow on the TV bubble. And the Legends of Poker final table was set. For more analysis on tonight's play, let's head over to WPT's very own Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. Now, Mike, Jeremy Collar is at a final table for a third season in a row. Rate his chances tonight. Lynn, Jeremy is a terrific player, and certainly his experience of having made multiple WPT final tables should give him an edge over the others tonight at the table, none of whom have been here before. His problem, though, is that everyone else has more chips. But with nearly two million in chips, he's got enough. If Jeremy gets off to a good start tonight, 
I like his chances. Well, I'll tell you something. These guys got to be happier than Snoop Dogg on vacation in Colorado, if you know what I mean. But seriously, this is every poker player's dream. The big lights, the big cash, and the Royal Flush Girls. We have it all here tonight. This is going to be fun. And just before the players took their seats, we grabbed a quick word with chip leader Mike Eskinderi. Can't really wait to get on that table and get it going and play my game and take it down. No questions. Confidence is running high here at the Bicycle Casino, so who has the talent and heart to take down the title tonight? The cards are set to fly, so let's send it to Mike and Vince for the call of the game. Well, here we go, the kickoff event, Legends of Poker of Season 13. There you see the Skrill chip count. Mike Escondari out front with nearly six million in chips. Harry Aratunian in second place. Winner's gonna take home over 576,000. And along with the cash winnings, the winner tonight will also get a beautiful Ublow watch. The Annie's are 5,000, blinds are 25 and 50,000. And just 10 years back, the great Doyle Brunson took down the legends of poker in this very casino. It was incredible. Jeremy Kotler first to act. He's a semi-professional player. Will fold his hand, and now the man with the towel on his head, Kenny, will not play. Over to our chip leader, Mike Escandari. He's 54 years old, out of Mission Viejo. Former civil engineer goes out here. Tyler Cornell throws in his hand, and now Harry used to have a pizza shop. Yeah, got rid of the pepperoni, now has a bottled water company. Good poker player, though. Will raise, and he's going to get called by Taylor McFarlane from Seattle. Flops an ace, jack nine. So Harry out in front with the two aces. He's reaching for betting chips. Harry is a cash game player, local, and he's gonna bet 115,000. Open-ended though for Taylor. He might wanna speculate here. He is gonna make the call. This is Taylor's fourth WPT event. And let's see if he catches, nope, five of spades on the turn. Well, Harry still thinks his aces are out in front. Indeed, they are. He's going to bet again, this time 230000 And Taylor's going to have to pay to see it, but he looks interested and makes the call. Down to the river we go. A nine on the river, so no luck for Taylor. That's a good check by Harry here. Give your opponent a chance to bluff at the pot in case he has a drawing hand, like he does. Taylor started playing poker in high school. Look at this, he's gonna take a shot at a bluff. Did not Harry catch his back. hand, so that's what you do. I bet you know what Harry's saying to himself now. It was a lot easier when I met Sally. You worked on that for a long time, didn't you? Thought about it last night. Tough decision for Harry, but you gotta think Ace is up probably the best hand. Indeed they are, he makes the call. McFarland tried to bluff on the river, didn't work. And he's got his friends there. He's a local Harry, a cash game player. Doing well right there with the call. We're just getting started at the Bicycle Casino here on the World Poker Tour. This episode of the World Poker Tour is sponsored in part by DraftKings. If you like poker and sports, then you're gonna love daily fantasy sports at DraftKings. Go to DraftKings.com, enter promo code WPT, and start playing today. Harry Arcunia. I've had a phenomenal week just to even make it this far. I've watched every episode. One day I'll have my name on that cup. Hopefully it's today. Taylor This is going to be my first time on a televised final table. I'm a little nervous in, in this spot, but I'm going to be comfortable uh, once the cards get in the air. Jeremy Butler. A lot of good results in the last few years. I think I've improved over time. You know, you need a lot of things to go your way. I'd really like to win this one. I'm hoping today's the day. Tyler Kenny. I feel like it's been a long time since I've had my moment in poker. I'm gonna put other people to the test. I think it's my time to shine. Mike Escandari. I really believe is winning it once is just called lucky one night. I like to win it, and then I like people to keep seeing me on the final table. Then I can say, hey, I'm here to stay. Tyler Cornell. I can probably play a better game without the cameras. I'm not here for the fame. I just wanna win some money. There are the six superstars going after this title here tonight. Current chip leader still the same. Mike Escondari out in front with six million. Harry Aratunian in second place with about five million. 
Harry, a local player, plays a lot of cash games. 31 years old, action's on him. Let's take a look at his cards. Well, he's got one of those little suited connectors, five, six of clubs, but he likes not to play. Over to Taylor McFarland. Plays down an ace, nine off suit. And now Jeremy Kotler with an ace queen. Well, this certainly going to be raised. 105,000. Jeremy Kotler, a businessman. Plays poker as a hobby, but takes it very seriously. Has done very well. Tyler Kenny, very talented young pro, goes out. And now the chip leader, Mike Escondari, with a pair of threes, has made the call. Tyler Cornell goes out. Here comes the flop. It's a queen, Jack, Jack. So good flop for Jeremy there. Mike checks the two threes. And let's see if we see the continuation bet. Kotler with top pair and top kicker. He's going to check, though. Turn card is a four of diamonds. So now there's three diamonds. Jeremy, of course, with the ace of diamonds. Mike's going to check again. Jeremy is one of my favorites. He's playing solid poker. As a matter of fact, I love to play top-notch players because I know where they're at. I can have a good read, and my read is my biggest weapon on the table. Well, Jeremy's going to reach for chips this time. Has the best hand with the best draw. That's 110. Yeah, because Kotler checked on the flop. He's getting called by Mike here with the two threes. King of spades on the river, doesn't change anything. Mike well, Mike checks. Now you have the ace of diamonds, so you think your opponent's got something when he makes the call. So you understand why Jeremy checks on the river here. The two queens are gonna win this pot. So Jeremy Kotler, who has worldwide earnings of 1.2 million, come to this final table. He's never won a live tournament, though. Looking to do that today. One poker tip I would give to people who are just starting out is basically never give up. I know it sounds cliche, but when you still have a stack, never give up. Any chips you have, you're still alive, and just don't give it away. There's no question, this tournament, I had a lot of things going my way. I've had a few speed bumps here along the way as well. The nice thing about having a lot of chips is you withstand that stuff, and you're still in the tournament, try to build it back up. Yeah, I used to be a real estate guy, and now a semi-professional poker player, businessman, Jeremy Cutler. And right now the Andes are going up to 10,000. Blinds are 30 and 60. Mike Escondari still the chip leader. Well, over to Taylor McFarland, who's on the short stack right now. Looks at a Queen Deuce offsuit. He's going to go out. Cutler. Won't play that mess. And now the man with the washcloth on his head, Tyler Kenny. He won't play. Over to the chip leader. Mike Escondari going to make a raise on the button here with the King-9 offsuit. Tyler out, but Harry with a King-Jack will make this call. We are going to see the flop. Well, flop is 10-9-5 rainbow. Mike has made second pair here. Action's going to be on Harry. And he's going to lead out and bet with the gut shot straight draw and the two over cards. Trying to take the play away from the chip leader, but it's not going to work. Mike makes the call. No, Vince, he raises the pot. Did he raise it? Oh, wow. 405,000 he's made it. He's going to test Harry, but that's a quick test because Harry just immediately puts in the rest of the chips. Well, I love this raise, Vince, because it's going to freeze your opponent on the turn. There you see it. Because he raised there, now it's his option whether he wants to continue betting or not to. Now an ace comes off on the river. Let's see if Harry gets bold. Take a stab at this bluff. No. He checks again. But look at this. Mike reaching for chips. Even though he's got nines, just in case his opponent's got a pair of tens, he might lay him down here when the ace comes on the river. So Mike going to make a stab at this pot. Going to win it with two nines. So well done by the chip leader right there, Mike Escondari. He's got his fans in the audience. Mike Escondari winning that hand. Six players remain here at the bike. We're coming back for more. Welcome back to Los Angeles and the Bicycle Casino. Six players competing for this championship. The Legends of Poker continues. And right now, Mike Escondari is the chip leader. He's a local. He's 54 years old. He's got his fan base here tonight. 
Yeah, oldest player at the table, came to the final table as chip leader, known as CBK, still out in front with a nice lead. Comeback kid, and actions on Jeremy, former real estate guy, quickly folds. Tyler Kenny also out. Over to the chip leader, Escondary, he's out as well. So now it's around to Tyler Cornell from San Diego. He's got ace three. Not everybody's gonna raise on the button with this hand. He's doing it too, 125,000. Harry goes out. And now Taylor McFarland from Seattle. He's got king six, he's in the big blind. Can he afford to splash around? He says yes, puts in his money. We're gonna see a flop. And he's on the short stack, so bold call by him there, but might work out. He's flop bottom pair here, he has two sixes. Yeah, he got a little piece of it. He's gonna check. Taylor, he's very good. I have a lot of respect for his game. It sucks having him on my left because he's gonna play pretty perfectly against me. He's not gonna make very many mistakes, I think. Well, let's see if he makes a mistake here or not. Interesting about him, he was a last minute entry. Just was visiting friends down here in LA and he said, I'm gonna play this tournament and he's doing great. And look at this, three of a kind for him. Well, has his opponent drawing dead right now. How do you play the three sixes? You check and hope he fires again. Will Tyler do it and fall into that trap? No, too smart. Checks it as well down to the river card. Well, an eight comes up. McFarlane not gonna like that card because now there's a four card straight on the board, but I'm sure he's gonna check and call here in case Cornell bets. But he's gonna check it down. Taylor McFarlane gonna take down this pot with the three sixes. He says he's a very competitive guy, loves poker, played football in high school. There is Vivek Rajkumar, a WPT champion, rooting on his good friend Taylor McFarland. Yeah, I played a lot of poker with Vivek. He is a terrific player. Happy to see Taylor taking down that pot. Okay, on to the next hand. Harry Aratunian owns a bottled water company right now. Quickly folds his hand, Taylor. Very successful on that last hand, won't play that. Jeremy Cutler out. So around to the button. Tyler Kenny looks at the King Five offsuit, just gives it up quietly, so it's a battle of the blinds here. Mike Escudero, the chip leader with Queen Seven, is gonna make the raise, 120 to go. And Tyler Cornell with one of those very seductive suited connectors will make this call and try to strike lucky. Here we go. Now flop king three deuce. No help for Mike, but he's gonna make a continuation bet here anyway. 80,000. Tyler with just an inside straight draw looks over. Uh, the back door flush draw. He's gonna make the call. Gets a read on his man and makes a nice solid call with nothing. Going to the turn, but now he catches a five, gets a little piece of it. Look at this, Mike gonna fire a second shell here. Showing a lot of heart here. Now he's got the big chip lead, so you can afford to show heart. But 200,000 to bet now. He's gonna try to put the pressure on the young guy from San Diego, but it's not gonna work because Tyler likes his hand now, makes this call. And he's got a pair and a gut shot straight draw. And the seven comes off, look at that. Just like that, Mike has made the best hand with two sevens, he checks. Cornell checks right behind him and takes a sigh as he realizes he got outdrawn on the river there. And there you see the CBK fans. It's my specialty. The comeback kid. Well, he came back on that hand, that's for sure. <laughs> but he doesn't have to come back on these players because he's the chip leader right there, as you can see, with close to seven million in chips now. Didn't let his foot off the pedal, kept pushing, pushing, and then he finally gets lucky, takes down the pot. Back to the action, Tyler. He's got to be a little frustrated by that last event. He folds a 9-8. Harry, with a pretty decent ace-10 of spades, will raise. 120 to go. Standard raise hand. Taylor with a nothing, 7-5. Goes out. Kotler out. Tyler Kenny. He goes out. But our chip leader with the king eight this time will make this call. Well, why not? Just won the last pot with a queen seven offsuit. 
So ace 10 versus king 8. And look at this king 8 ace on the flop. Two pair for Mike, and he checks it. Oh, this could be something big, Vince. These are the two chip leaders going at it. One's got top pair, the other flop two pair. Continuation bet with the aces for Harry. He bets 140. Would he raise now, Vince, or slow play and raise later? He's just calling here with the kings and eights. So we're going to the turn. Oh, with this very safe five of clubs from Mike, and he's going to check again. Harry's going to make the bet of 230. Well, you're going to see a check raise here, I'm pretty sure. Wow, he just makes a call here, Vince. Doesn't raise with two pair, I can't believe it. Very shocking, down to the river, seven of diamonds. Well, he checks. Oh, boy. And a good check by Harry right behind him. Well, Vince, oh, Mike no! Escondary is pulling that horn like he did something special there. The truth is, he lost a lot of value by never raising after flopping two pair. Nice flop. He really did. He lost a lot of value. Lucky. As he rakes in the chips, he's the chip waiter. We'll come back with more action in just a moment. Tonight's episode is sponsored by Ublow, the official watch of the World Poker Tour. And the all-new Club WPT game on Facebook. Search Club WPT on Facebook and play poker with your friends today. Welcome back to the WPT Legends of Poker, brought to you by Club WPT.com. Now, just because you're sitting at home doesn't mean you can't jump in the game. At Club WPT, you can play for a share of $100,000 in cash and prizes each month. You could win a seat to one of our main events and sharpen your poker skills on the virtual felt. So log on to club at WPT.com. You won't regret it. Looks like action is starting back up here at the bike, so I'll send it down to Mike and Vince. <laughs> Well, there you see the chip counts of the players. Escondary well out in front with 7.5 million, has a commanding chip lead right now. The Andes are still 10,000, the blinds 30 and 60,000. Back to the felt we go, Jeremy Cotler. Yeah, action on the Buckeye, he folds. Tyler Kenny hasn't picked up too many hands, folds that one as well. Now the chip leader, Mike, with a king queen, is going to raise to 125. Over to Cornell, on the button he folds. And Harry from LA, the cash game player with a suited connector will make this call. He's got a 9-10 of hearts. Over to McFarland, getting a good price to call, but has no hand here. So he's gonna get out. So the two chip leaders going at it here. King, queen versus 9-10 of hearts, and the flop is a 3-3-6. Well, no help to either player. Action on Harry, he checks. Continuation bet by Mike of 125,000. He's going to put the pressure back on Harry. He's getting out raising chips. He's going to check raise the chip leader here. 425,000. He's cracking his knuckles, Vince, but I don't think you can make a play here with just a king queen in this spot. He is going to lay that down. Great play by Harry. He says, oh boy. Harry, you're dirty, Harry, to raise me there. Nice play. Former pizza shop owner spreads the tomato sauce on his victim. Harry with a big, bold move. Beautifully done. You got a lot out there. There's people out there that they won't let him in right now. I'm talking about in your chips. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant <laughs> That's what you meant. Thank you. Tyler this time with a quick fold, and Harry picks up a pair of sevens. Well, he won that last pot by check raise with no hand and no draw against the chip leader, so he's feeling good. You know he's going to play these two sevens. He's going to raise it, 120,000. Queen to Taylor, who just has a queen eight. Won't make that call. Jeremy out as well. So over to Tyler Kenny. He looks down at the king four hearts in position, but opts not to play it. And now our chip leader, Mike, has picked up a pair of sixes. And he's going to raise here, Vince. He's going to three bet with two sixes. Makes it 410,000 to go. Going to put the pressure right back on Harry. Oh, Harry in a dominating position here with two sevens against two sixes. But what do you do after the guy three bets in front of you? with this middle pair. 
And the guy doing it is the chip leader. You invest more, that's exactly what Harry's doing. Yep, he makes the call. Harry said he's seen every WPT event. He's watched every one. That's pretty impressive. But the flop comes up at ace, queen, four. No help to either player. Uh-oh. He's doing it. The continuation bet here by Mike. 450,000. It's pretty healthy. This hand is going to demonstrate the power of the three bet. There you see Harry showing the seven, throwing him away. But had Mike not three bet before the flop there, if he'd have just called and then checked, good chance that Harry would have bet and won that pot. The power of the three bet in display here tonight at the Legends of Poker. Time of time. <laughs>Bicycle Casino is definitely one of my favorite places in the whole wide world. First of all, it's home. Second of all, they have great tournaments throughout the whole year. Bicycle is wonderful. And the staff are very friendly, very accommodating. They always listen to what the players are asking for and try to improve themselves, and that's why they're very successful right now. <laughs> well, players do love it here at the bike. They have great tournaments and great cash game action. And before we get back to the action, let's check out the sensational play of our chip leader as he holds strong in the monster hand of the day. He was the comeback kid, Mike Askandari. He took aggression into his own hands when he three-betted with pocket sixes after a raise by Harry holding a pair of sevens. Oh, you're right, Vance. He showed no hesitation and no mercy. He fired the seabed on the flop. Wanting no part of that action, Harry folds his hand. It extends Mike's dominant run here at the final table. Right now, Mike Escondari, 7.8 million in chips. He is running over the table at this point. Let's go back down to the table. And the Annies are going up to 10,000. Blinds are 40 and 80. As we continue to compete here, six players going after the Legends of Poker. Jeremy Kotler goes out. Tyler Kenny hasn't been able to play too many cards, not getting any, and he goes out. Our chip leader does as well. Okay, over to the button. Cornell on the short stack here, but opts not to play king six. To Harry, the local, the cash player. Now certainly gonna raise out of the small blind here like he does, 165,000 to go. Taylor McFarland will make the call with a queen 10. So the blind's battling here. And the flop comes queen jack four, good flop for McFarland. He's got top pair action is on Harry. He didn't hit there, but he's got his hand out for a bet. Yep. Well, 155,000 is the bet. And now Taylor with top pair. All in. There he goes. Yep, it's about that time. You start pushing. And Harry can't take the heat. And Taylor McFarlane taking that as his buddy Vivek in the audience and their friends. Power poker. We'll find out soon. You know, Taylor's just a great story just showing up here in town to visit friends and says, hey, I heard there's a poker tournament going on. He decides to play it, and now he's at the final table. How exciting that has to be. And McFarland says he's not nervous Harry playing at the table, but he's nervous in front of the cameras. Doesn't look like it so far. Harry and Taylor going out. Over to Kotler. Now the WPT hole cam sponsored by DraftKings. Oh, and look at this, he's picked up pocket kings. 160. And anytime a player at the final table picks up two kings, as Kotler has here, he gets $1,000 put in his DraftKings account. Well, he's made it 160. Tyler Kenny can't play. And now our chip leader, Mike. Call. call. He's got to make this call. call. And Tyler now with a king 10. Well, he's also got a good price to make this call, Vance. So we're going to have three-way action here. Jeremy well out in front with the two kings right now. Here comes the flop, a big ace and three clubs. Disappointing for Kotler. The chip leader Escondary leading right out with two aces and a flush draw. Taylor going out. Now Kotler does have the king of clubs though. Vince, you think he just might shove right here with the nut flush draw and two kings in case his opponent's got a weak ace, you might get him off of it. He's going to push it. Makes it 460 to go. How much you got behind? I love this raise, Vince. He's got a hand. He can draw two no matter what happens. And in case his opponent's got a weak ace like he does, he might just throw it away right here. Call. But Mike is not going to throw away anything. He's making this call. Discouragement of Cutler. 
Would just love to hit a club right now. Can he do it? Nope. Jack, Jack of diamonds. diamonds. All in. Oh, all Mike in. is going to push them all in. Wow. It's just like he knew he had the king of clubs, Vince. And that's what he was raising on. Incredible. But Jeremy, with the kings, hard to lay it down. You got the king of club out there as well. He's going to take a gamble. He's making this call. Oh, you're good. Well, over two and a half million in the pot. He's got a million left. Oh, you're the kings. Ooh. Mike, very happy he's out in front. Didn't think he was when he got called. Jeremy Cotler, the former real estate guy, has to sweat out a card. Well, Jeremy Cotler is going to have to catch a king or a club. Otherwise, he'll be our sixth place finisher. Can he get the magical club? No, it's a jack of spades. Mike Escondari taking down that pot. Going to knock out Cotler. He came to this final table in sixth place, and that's where he finishes. A great gentleman, great player. He's going to take home 83,000. And just like that, Jeremy's out of here. We're down to five. I wanted to make sure there's no club out there, and I pushed out. I can't believe he called. Yeah, that was sick. That was crazy. Um, no, I had 20 big blinds to start the hand. I flopped enough flush draw, and I thought, you know, potentially I could get him to fold in the flop and, um, you know, at least check back the turn if I didn't hit. And when you shove the turn, I mean, there's just too much in the pot to fold. So, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. With Jeremy Cotler's elimination, we end our first hour of coverage from the Bicycle Casino. For Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, the Royal Flush Girls and everyone at the World Poker Tour, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. See you next time on the WPT. I don't understand what this is for. <laughs> the World Poker Tour is sponsored by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. Welcome back to Los Angeles and the Bicycle Casino. Feeling like a million bucks. That yeah. goes sometimes. Amongst the bright lights of the Bicycle Casino, one player's dream of poker stardom will come true. Hi everyone, welcome to the World Poker Tour. I'm Lynn Gilmartin. We've seen some huge payouts so far, but all of our remaining players have their sights set on the biggest prize. Let's check in with Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten to see what we've got in store for tonight's final table. Well, Lynn, so far it's been the Mike Escondari show at this final table. He came to the final table as chip leader. He's done nothing but increase that chip lead. The best thing is he has a lot of friends. Okay, and they all went out and got those $15 t-shirts, the CPK on it. What friends, what a time. This is his moment. Can he do it? Thanks, guys. Let's check the chip counts and get back to the game. Well, there you see the squirrel chip count, and the guy they call CBK for the comeback kid, Mike Escondari, as you can see, doesn't have to come back right now. He's got a monster chip lead with about 9.8 million. The second place guy, Harry Arbertunian, has 3.3 million. Mike has only been playing poker for five years, but look at his friends there. Pretty incredible. Annie's are 10,000, blinds are 40 and 80,000. Here we go. Legends of Poker, 10 years ago, Doyle Brunson took down this title. Who will take it down tonight? Harry, first to play. He'll fold his hand. That's on pro player, Taylor McFarlane. He's out as well. Tyler Kenny from LA, likes to skateboard, do yoga. He goes out and now our chip leader. Looks down at the King Six offsuit. He's gonna raise it. Tyler Cornell behind him. Mike is quite the character. He's a lot of fun to play with. He can be very crazy. Crazy is sometimes hard to play against because you don't really know what's coming. All in. Call. All in. Tyler has gone all in. Wow, and a snap call by Escondari there. Oh, oh, in my oh, mind, yeah. a little crazy of playing that way. Nice in. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I'm not in favor of this call at all for another 820,000 to double up a tough player like Tyler Cornell. Let's have it come four, five, eight. Three, four, five. Four, five, eight. Three, I like three, four, five better. <laughs> four, five, eight with a club. Give it a sweat. Tyler Cornell from San Diego with a great chance of doubling up. Here we go with the flop, Mike. And the flop comes queen nine four. Dream flop right there for Cornell. That's out. That's what I'm talking about. Sweat this out. Six. His opponent now has to catch running sixes to win this six, pot. Six. 
<laughs> that is all that will do it for him. Nice, Sam. It's not over yet. We've seen a lot of these runner runners. Man, 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 man. That's a little too much. Mike is already conceding, it appears, and he is correct as a deuce of hearts hits the turn. It's over. I don't know why you want to double up a tough player like this. Nice, Sam. Thanks. With a Garfunkel hand like that. There you go, Ty. Yep, baby. I like the pre-flop raise, but when the guy moves in on you, I think you got to save the 820. Just fold the hand, go to the next one. This is just another tournament. I hope to win and hope to make a lot of money. I used to play competitive hockey, but over the last couple of years, just been poker, really. I've had some medium success here. So it's finally good to break through and hopefully we can pull one out. Well, Vance, he said he had medium success in this tournament. He's finished 11th twice before this tournament, and here he is at the final table playing for the title. That is more than medium success in my mind. All right, onto the hand. He's going to quickly fold. And now Harry Eratunium used to have a pizza shop, folds as well. On to Taylor from Seattle. Won't play. So the battle of the blinds here. And look at this. Tyler Kenny just limping in out of the small blind with King Nine of Diamonds. Can't do that with Mike, though, because he's going to pop it up. Makes it 280 to go with a queen jack. Well, Vince, you think you have the best hand with a queen jack when the guy doesn't raise out of the small blind. But Tyler's going to call him. So we're going to have a flop here. And the flop is a jack five deuce. Jacks for Mike. With two diamonds, Vince. We could see some real fireworks here. Yeah, Tyler checks. Mike's betting his jacks. Now this could be a check raise. Tyler from L.A., the yoga guy. How do you play the flush draw? Do you call or do you raise? He likes to skateboard, wear washcloths on his head. <laughs> he is going to call it. Going to the turn. Can he hit the diamond? Oh, dream no. card. The king comes off. He now has the best hand and the best draw. Oh, he checks, but Mike wisely checks right behind him. A nonchalant seven comes off. Now I think you have to value bet the kings here. Tyler doing just that. Call. King. Oh, you lucky devil. You're going to call for sure with two jacks in this situation. Moans and groans. Well, he'd been moaning more if his opponent would have check raised him on a flop because he would have doubled him up. Nice flop for both of us. Yeah. He can't go nowhere. Just like he did a minute ago against the other Tyler. TKO, baby. TKO. Yep, and there's some friends of Tyler's. TKO? I don't know. I don't know. I picked up some. Oh. I picked up some Robert's though. Oh, you don't know him, man. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tyler's an entrepreneur. Nice. Part-time poker player, 25 years old. Third WPT cash, first WPT final table. Tyler's favorite poker player is his brother Bryn, a World Series of Poker bracelet winner. He's the guy that taught him how to play. And with that pot, Tyler Kenny moves into second chip position. Mike's still out in front with 8.4 million in chips. Action on Tyler. He'll fold that. Mike gonna take a breather, goes out as well. So the other Tyler, Tyler Cornell, Looks down at a king six offsuit. He's got the button. And he will not play that. Just gives it up. Into Harry. Well, Harry has the three deuce here. He's just going to limp in and call out of the small blind. And Taylor from Seattle has an ace seven. All in. And he says all in. Yeah, good bet here by Taylor. Only way he can be beat with this hand is if his opponent was deliberately trapping him. That not the case here. Taylor going to take it down. You see his buddy Vivek Rajkumar, WPT champion, both guys from Seattle. Well, Taylor's a great story, Mike. He wasn't going to play the tournament, didn't even know about it, just visiting friends, and all of a sudden he said, there's a tournament going on, I think I'll play. Yeah, certainly a wise move for him to do that as he's sitting here with five left fighting it up for the title. Okay, next hand goes on. Mike, our chip leader with a 10-6 of hearts. Guy likes to play anything and everything. Gonna raise with the 160 to go. Yeah, right under the gun. Raises it up. Tyler Harry out. Taylor out. 
And now Tyler Kenny looks over. Tyler's got a pretty decent ace, eight of hearts. Well, you know this guy raises weak. Well, he's going to make this call. Ten six versus ace eight. They all got hearts, and we are flopping. It's a nine three three. Helps neither player. No action on Tyler Kenny. He's going to check. A quick continuation bet by Mike. No hand. No draw. Nothing. Three hundred thousand worth of nothing. Just pressure. You see Tyler's girlfriend, Jordana, watching the action here. But Tyler going to lay it down. Fold. I fold. I was just going to show it. So well played again by the chip leader, raising before the flop, making the C bet, taking it down. This guy's coming at me with bombs.